Hallelujah. As David uttered, from the depths of his being, he declared, while I live, I will barach, I will bless, I will shincha, I will praise you. What a great blessing that he grants unto a nation of his election to come before him on the Shabbat, the Shabbaton. Hallelujah. And so we say to all you that are listening, you that have joined us, VM the Modam, you have joined us. We say to you, Yam Shabbat Isha, or have a happy Shabbat day. So we greet you all. Yoshua's mighty name that the Shabbaton will be a great day and our expectations will come from Yah, from Torah. Don't be deceived that he is speaking to a people, a nation, an individual with some kind of vocal voice. He speaks by the volume that he has written in our bosom. And it must be in complicit alignment with Torah. If it's not according to the manuscript of Torah, it's a lie. It is a deception from the darkness of one's own bethim, one's own belly, one's own corruption. When he speaks to us by hearing, uh, there's a witness by his breath, his ruach hachodash that speaks with volume and testify to that which he has had He has written in the bosom of his nation, his people, to give them great assurance. So don't tell me he is talking to you because he is not. I'm going to teach today was one that wrote me on this past week and was telling me about the dream that one had that Yah gave unto them. I said, Yah did not give you that dream. It was by your activities of your day, those things that you had perpetrated in your bosom, pondered and thought upon. And so you believe that Yah gave you that dream if you had called me. I would have told you from the beginning it was a forest. It was not the truth. It was a lie of your own deception that you had conceived in your own bosom. Now be it this individual was going through great pains and the thralls of great pains the agony but it is the false perception that led you astray from truth whereby you have erred in your ways and you have induced this cataclysmic mayhem upon your own home for you rejected me the simple messenger of Yah that would have corrected you and told you you were wrong and of all the people this individual knows, there's no one else that the person believed could get a prayer through. But they contacted us here. I will not pander to the emotions of this generation. You can forget that if you think I will. That's why I want to teach today. I want to do it emphatically. And not miss one concept that is important for us to know. We must understand the thoroughness of the Torah of Yah. And there are not many men that can teach us that. There are not many men that can teach us that. And the reason that I want to teach on this teaching today, I was conversating with one. And the person says to me, someone made a statement 
concerning me. I'm not trying to defend me. I defend Torah, the revelation of that. And the person said, quote, You know that man down there, no regard to the simple messenger of Yah. He starts fires on the Shabbats. I know what Torah says concerning the fourth commandments. But I have revelation of the teaching of truth. The man starts a fire on the Shabbat. I will never start a fire on the Shabbat. Have never started a fire on the Shabbat. I am talking about the literal one and the supernatural one. You understand? So in order for us to understand the precepts of Torah, that fourth commandment, we must be taught. And there must be wisdom among those that are identified to teach. Not every man has the ability to teach because not every man meditates on the Torah of Almighty Yah. They are not what we call Talmud, those that seek diligently the wisdom of Torah, that they can dispense it not only from a practical spiritual revelation, but they reveal the essence of that. So you don't have that today, and there's a reason for not having that. And there's a reason we don't understand the depths of the Torah. We don't have men, as Torah says, they do not hagah. They do not meditate. They do not speak to their minds of the depths of Torah. They do not utter the Torah. They do not fancy the Torah whereby their mind is consumed with the living power of Torah. There's only a specific kind of man that does that. And you can identify him and the thread of that identity must be from Bereshit, the beginning, the Berith, to the Giliana, the end of all things. And so we must see the thread of that throughout Torah. So in order to understand the fourth commandment, you just don't begin where the fourth commandment is uttered unto Moshe. You don't begin there. That's not how it begins. I want to begin here to show us the very identity and the character of those that are able to dispense the wisdom and revelation of Torah. I want us to pay attention, to be attentive. You write the verses down at home. I want you to challenge me if I am in error, but you must show me with the preponderance of evidence of Scripture I am wrong because I have a plethora of Scripture here. To conclude one thing, I do not start a fire on the Shabbats. Beginning here in the book of Yahushua ben Nun, Joshua, the first chapter. I want to move somewhat with expedition or date the time so that I can convey the fullness of this truth unto us. In the book of Joshua, Joshua, chapter 1. I want to read verse 1 and then I want to read verse 7 and verse 8. It says in Yahushua ben Nun, Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Now after the mouth of the Maveth, the death of Moshe, the Torah explicitly tells us that he was an abbot, a servant. One that was faithful and loyal unto Yah. He was a servant of Almighty Yahweh. It came to pass that Yah... The messenger, after his death, that Yah spoke, he uh, asa, he uttered, he spoke unto uh, 
Yehoshua, son of Nun, Moshe's minister, and he began to deal with him as to what the mandate, the command of Torah that had been granted unto him uh, and what he should do. Yes. Verse 7 says, uh, he speaks this profoundly unto this messenger. He says, I want you to only be strong, to have the koach, the wisdom of Torah, the might of Torah. He says, and I want you to be very courageous. I want you not to faint at the assault, the onslaught of darkness that shall reproach you uh, and come against you. I want you to be strong and of great courage uh, that you may, you must be strong in order that we must observe, yeah. we must shema, we must guard, yeah. we must preserve, we must hedge it about with thorns. Uh, he said, you must have this characteristic. Uh, these must be the features of your character in order for you uh, that you may observe. That you may watch carefully and observe, he says, uh, to do, to assar, to fashion your mind, to fashion your heart. He did not say some, but call all, all according to all the Torah. You must do everything that is according to Torah. We must do everything that is according to Torah. We must do everything that is according to Torah. And in order for us to do that, we must be strong. We must have great courage. We must encourage ourselves, encourage one another by speaking or we meditate on Torah day and night. He says, which Moshe, my servant, commanded you. And he tells him not to turn to any assistance from your own proclivity, your desires, your passion. Don't turn to the left or to the right hand. Uh, he says, and the reason why that you may shalach, you may prosper, you may increase, uh, you may grow beyond bounds uh, of the concept of man, uh, that they may see the living power of Torah in your bosom. Now that's what Yah commanded him. And this is the instructions uh, of your Almighty. There is no way that we can, as a nation of people, begin to progress without men that are strong, without men that are of great courage, and men that guards the Torah, and men that do all according to what is written in the Torah of Moshe. We must have men like that. That must be established first to prove the value of the Shabbat and what does Yah implies when he says that don't even kindle a fire on the Shabbat. Hallelujah. Quickly be made by the book of Numbers. There is a process in the appointing of the Zachim or the elders. And Bimit Bar Numbers chapter 11 gives us direct uh, types, prototypes of what one's qualification must be in order for one, and you will know that one resonates that because one has meditated. David said, I meditate in the Torah of Yah day and night. We don't meditate in the Torah of Yah. The elderly men do not meditate. They meditate upon their lust, their folly, their immaturity, but not upon the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And so the instructions unto Moshe, Numbers 11, verse 16, it says, And Yah said to Moshe, He said, I want you to gather to me, not to you. I want this offering to be presented unto me. He said, I want you to gather to me 70 men of the Zachim, or the elders of Yisrael. Not all the elders had the qualification. And Yah knew that there was only 70. That signifies the great 70 weeks that we shall be tried in the great furnace of darkness. He knew that. 
And that's why each of them represent a vital importance when it comes to the hook, the statues of revelation of Torah. He said, gather unto me 70 zachenim, 70 elders among Israel, whom you yada. You have discerned, you have perceived that they are wise. No one wants a messenger to tell them that they are unlearned men, that they are immature. No one wants the messenger, but yet Yah says to Moshe, I want you to elect because you have my mind. We have the mind of Yahshua. I want you to gather 70 elders among the children of Yisra'ya that you yada, you discern, you know, not know of. There is that intimacy because you know they labor in the Torah. Their minds perceive what you speak unto them. And you have identified them by discerning them. You have a knowledge of Torah. You see their works. You see their ruaka, And above all, you see their ponim. You see their faces. You see their attitude in their faces and in their briars. He said, I want you to pick out 70 men, other people. He said, in office, he says, I want you to, the men that you know, uh, he says, uh, and those Zachayim, uh, I want you to order them, dang them, uh, to be the leaders of the people and officers over them yes. to bring and bring them into the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with you. That's the strength uh, of a true Zachayim. He stands with the messenger of Yah. He stands with that one that he knows that is an abbot, a servant. When a man doesn't labor to understand the intricacies of Torah, he cannot discern who is the true messenger of Yah. He doesn't know a damn thing. He said that they may stand with you, Moshe. He says, Yah says, and I will come down and talk with you there. I will cause the revelation of my Torah, my Hamashiach, to be revealed. He says, and I will take the Ruach, the spirit of life, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. I will take the Ruach which is upon you. Huh? He said, and I will put, I will not thumb. I will bestow that, I will grant that upon the zip for burden, for reason. Why? And they shall bear the massa. It's amazing that during, during the antebellum days of slavery, it was one thing that the slaves, they would say, yes, Amasa. See, even the tongue of the DNA of their forefathers, they knew that this was a great burden upon them. They knew that the weight of agony, I will show you what I'm implying. We don't know a damn thing because we don't meditate. I'm a student of Torah. And when I say something, I know what I am saying. Eh? And so that's why they would say, Yasamasa. 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 That's what they would say. Because they knew the burden was heavy. And Yah says, these Zachim, they will bear the burden, the Masa, the heavy yoke, and the heavy obligation. They shall bear that with the burden of the people and you shall not bear it alone now that is the strength of any yeah. an elder they bear the burdens of the people they're wise and they understand they have the power to discern because they have the ruach of the messenger of yah we are and we have been taught our own individualized little concepts it is not because we labor in the Torah, because we don't labor in the Torah. We do our best to read Torah. It is not that we hug up. When a man meditates on the Torah, you see the light of Torah in his countenance. You see the fruit of the Torah in him. He says, I want you to be strong and be, be of great courage, uh, that you may guard the Torah, why? that you may show lack. And when a man show lack, when a man prospers, when a man grows, when a man has strength of the Ruach, you will see that. Yeah, yeah. 
You will know that that man is a peculiar. He is a sugula. He is a man that has separated himself. And his mind is not like the mind of the world. His attitude is not that way. A strong man does not move from his place or, or the position of his place because he knows that he finds an assurance in the meditating of Torah. I said to my Isho, I said, you know, I was in the store the other day. And there was this woman looking at me. And as I turned, she did not take her eyes off me. Not that she was lusting for me or she had some corrupt thing in her mind. Because if that had been the case, as soon as I looked at her, she would have turned her head. And so I looked in the woman's eyes. I said to my Isha, you could see the heaviness of her shoulders. They were somewhat drooped. So I looked at this woman. I could sense that. She did not take her eyes off me. She just looked. It was not some kind of fantasy of folly. No, there are men and had been, and she has seen men much stronger than I. I did not have the physical charm or the beauty as others. But I sense in that woman, as I said to my Isho, she saw something that was just unique. And she pondered and she wondered. Because if she had some kind of corrupt motive, she would have never continued to look at me. She saw something. And that's what the Torah points out to us. And that's why our eyes gaze upon it, and our hearts meditate, and our hearts delight in it, and our hearts are overtaken. It is engrossed in it, because it is what makes us strong and gives us the courage that we may observe to do all that Torah commands us to do. That we may bear the burden uh, of Yisrael. We may bear the burden of the stake of Yoshua HaMashiach. And yet the Torah commands us not to take a burden in on the Shabbat. Yeah. We're going to clarify that, Yisrael. Yeah. We're going to clarify all things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look what it says here in the book of Ma'as-Aseth. Or Shilishim. Ma'as-Aseth. Shilishim. The book of Acts. I want to prove the thread of what is the qualification uh, the Zachim, the strong men that guard and bear burdens, men that take the yoke, men that have strength, men that are not shallow little boys, immature little boys, daughters of Tizayon that are not immature, but I'm talking about strong men. It says in the book of Acts, here in the book of Acts, when the appointment of those that were necessary to bear the very burdens of the Grecians, and it says here in Acts 6 3, it says, Therefore, you Israelite Achim brothers, he said, I want you to look out among you. And I want you to find, first of all, the 70 and 7. It deals with the multiples of that perfect 7 that brings about the perfect law, the perfect ruach, the perfect wisdom and understanding of Torah. So he said, there must be seven men, and this must be the characteristic among them. They must be men of Imunah. They must be honest men. They must be men that are firm in Torah discipline and understanding. They must be stable men. They must be men with great assurance. They must be men that are wise in the counsel of Yah. That is what an honest man is. He is a man that has the emun or the emunah of Yah. He is firm in the disciplines of Torah because his life represents that. His life represents the power of the great strength of Torah. Men of honest reports, men that are steadfast, men that are not so soon shaken. Their children that are wicked do not shake them. Their ties to the world does not shake them. He said men of honest report. There must be a report of those that labor among us. We don't want no one to report on us, but we like to report on everyone else. They must be men, first of all, of honest report. And they must be malay, full 
abundance saturated that pours out full of the Ruach HaKodesh and wisdom Hukmah not only must they be manly full of the Ruach of Yah but they must be men full of wisdom that when the wise man speaks everyone shuts their mouths and their ears to hear that there's a quietness in the midst the standard has not changed it is that we are simply, we have simply removed ourselves from the wisdom of Torah that we permit, allow, and subjugate ourselves to anything. They must be full, manly, abundantly of the Ruach and wisdom. And they began to speak, even the chirping of the birds who will stand still. When Yah talks, the mountains tremble, the earth is moved out of his place. And this must be the characteristic and the persistence in men that are the Zachim, because they must bear the burden of Torah. They must carry the weight of Torah. They cannot be little weak men. They cannot be little sensitive boys. Boy cannot fight a battle. But a man can. And Ush, that preacher down there, he starts a fire on the Shabbats. We'll find out if I start a fire, okay? Hallelujah. They must be full of the Ruach HaKodesh and wisdom, uh, whom we may appoint over the business, the affairs of Yah. Just every man cannot be appointed over the affairs of Yah. Because he's an old man and gray-headed and gray-bearded, that doesn't mean he can be appointed uh, over the affairs of Yah. He must have the fullness uh, of the Amun, of the Ruach HaKodesh. He must be wise when he speaks. Uh, his voice is sure. The sound of his voice resonates the wisdom uh, that flows from the depths of his belly. Uh, and you find little chit-chattering uh, and silly men full of laughter and folly. They cannot teach the Torah of Yah. That's what you find. That's what you find today. And it's sad. You appoint them over the affairs of Yah, over the business of Yah. That's a strong position to be appointed over the affairs and the businesses of Yah, Yisra'ah. Yah. I want to show us this constance in Torah. We read one verse and we think we have revelation of it. We have no revelation of it. And we're going to find out. Quote, that preacher down there start fires on the Shabbat. Unquote. Hallelujah. Let us see the power of able men. And men that are strong. What must be the persistence of, the persistence of their character and the characteristics of that man. We must understand that. And it only can be found in the book of Shemoth. Exodus. Exodus chapter 18, the book of Exodus chapter 18. I want you to record these verses. And I have no problem with you judging me according to what I'm teaching today. You can challenge me uh, on every precept, uh, every pikud uh, that I shall teach today. I have no problem. But this is out of the mouth of the wise counsel of Yetro. When he saw the great agony of Moshe as he began to bear this massa, the great burdens and the affliction of a nation, of a people that was too much for him to bear. And so the wise counsel says here in Shemoth 18, verse 20, as he received the counsel of Yethro, he says this, and Moshe, this is what he says, and Moshe, Shall uh, not lament, but zaha. He must teach. We have heard the teaching on zaha. It is to warn. It is to make sure that the light of your wisdom shine. When a zakin shine with the wisdom of Torah, it is a warning to us. The light must go out from our eyes. It must go out from our forehead. It must go out by our speech. And Moshe, 
shall za zaha. He shall teach them. He shall warn them. There shall be a great light of the wisdom of Yah that shall go out. He shall teach them what? He shall teach them the statutes, the hook, what Yah has prescribed according to Torah, what is the mandate, what is according to the mitzvah. He says, and Moshe shall warn them in the areas whereby they are falling short of what Yah commands him. He shall teach them statutes and Torah. He shall teach them statutes and Torah. He shall teach them the hook and he shall teach them the Torah, the wisdom of Yah's skill nature, how to prepare for the battle that is set before us, that we are always ready, Yisrael. He shall teach them Torah and then it says, uh, and he shall show, he shall open up unto them, he shall reveal unto them uh, the way. The way. Who is? What is the way? Yoshua, the revelation of Yoshua. He said, I am the way. I am the light. I am the truth. And no man comes unto the above but by me. And he said, reveal unto us through the power of Torah the way. The way. Yoshua HaMashiach. Not every man can do that. Sir. He cannot. We got elderly men can hardly... Uh, even speak coherently uh, when it comes to Torah. Same thing with the elderly women because you don't meditate. Your lives are so circumspect. It is so false. It is not genuine. It is not real. There's too much pretense and falsehood. And we think we're getting by. We think we're getting by. And we offer this false delusional offering uh, as though that uh, we are full of the wisdom of Yah. We're not full of the wisdom. Yeah. We're not full of the knowledge. Yeah. We get one or two little verses and we want to show off that we know something. You don't know a damn thing. Yeah. They'll have at least a hundred plus verses here. But it's going to shine light on one thing. Quote that preacher down there start fires uh, on the Shabbat. Unquote. Yeah. We'll find out. And to show them the way. We need the messenger to show us the way. The way. And show them the way. Uh, listen to what he says. Uh, show them the way wherein they must halak or yalak. Uh, they must walk. They must strive. Uh, and the works uh, that they must do. Messiah. Messiah. That's the works. The works. The Messiah. The works of what must be accomplished according to Torah. That's amazing that that's how you enunciate that word there, Messiah. Because uh, Yahshua, the works of all Torah were fulfilled in that body of Yahshua, Hamashiach. Were they not? Sure they were. That the works uh, that we as a nation must do. This is what he commands him. He says, moreover, you shall provide... You shall chaza. You shall be able to discern. You must be able to perceive. You must be able to look closely and inspect. Verse 21. He said you must be able to provide. He's commanding Moshe. He says out of all the people. He says able men. What is an able man Yisrael? That is a man that is hayil. He's a man of strength. He's a man that is full of the strength of wisdom and understanding. He has this infectual love for Yah. You see it in everything he does. You see it in the man's walk, his talk, his attitude. You must provide out of all the people, men that are hayil, men that are able, men that are strong, men that are mature, that they may bear the burdens of the people. You understand that? We don't have many of those among us. We don't have many men that are able. We don't have many men that are high yield. We have few daughters that have any strength. We meditate in folly and gossip and chatter. But we don't meditate in Torah. We're intrigued by foolishness and sinful actions. But when it comes to the Torah, let someone begin to speak of our lawful duties of the Torah. We become angry. We get mad. We get upset. We want to change the conversation. That's a fact. 
I know the heart of man. I'm an observer. That's why he commanded Yahushua ben Nanda. He said, observe. And we must be able to pay attention to Shalak, to guard, and to watch things carefully. And from our watching, we perceive and we understand. We draw knowledge from that. My learning process of life has been coming, come by watching. One of the most profound processes of learning is by keeping my damn mouth shut. I've learned how to be quiet as a young man. I learned how to be quiet. I learned how to steal myself and listen and to observe men that I counted among me at that time that were wise men. We haven't learned that. The strength of those men, they must be able men. They must be full of the life of Yah. When they stand in your presence, you see the life and the strength of that man. He can't be broken down and hunched back with no life or strength. He must stand erect. He must stand with the assurance of wisdom in his mind. He must be full of the Ruach. He must be full of the living testimony of Yahshua. And you see it because he gets excited, not because he's laughing. And there's great frivolity or laughter or his face is smiling. No, his face shines. When Moshe came down with Yah, his face shined. There was no smile. The Torah didn't say there was a smile. But there was light. There was the ma'or. There was the of Yah upon the man's countenance. We look upon our faces, we see darkness. No see no light. We want to elevate ourselves as though we got something. We full of our own dung. When he came down from Yamoshia's face shone so that the people could not even look upon him. And what a true messenger of Yah, you don't want to look upon him. You don't want to look at his face. You don't want him to look in your eyes because you know, unless we have men that are able to judge and discern all things, then woe unto us. Woe unto us. Woe unto us, Yisrael. He said, first of all, the man must be able. He must be high yield. He must be efficient, effective. He must be full of the wealth of the wisdom of Torah. He is a man that meditates day and night like David upon the Torah, and that is what satisfies his inward parts. That is the, one of the main characteristics. He must be a man that is able. And men that such as Yira Yare, fear with great reverence, Yah. Fear with great reverence, Yah. There are men that have no fear of Yah. Exodus 8, 18, 21. They don't even fear Yah. They will speak to the messenger of Yah any kind of way. They will have disdain. They will speak from their damnable, corrupt hearts, their wicked hearts. That's how they will speak. And yet they will not even speak to the wicked like that. I've had men to speak to me. They will not speak to their wicked sons like that. They will not tell their daughter, you're a flat out fat whore and you're a faggot little son. They won't tell them that. But they have called me liars and corrupt. And I'm a wicked man. But they will not even tell their sons and their daughters, their kinsmen, that they're wicked as hell. They won't tell them that. But they will tell me that. I've had them to do it. Oh, you're a wicked man. Go to hell. If your wickedness call me wicked, I have no problem with your wickedness or your understanding of what a wicked man is. I don't even fear that. There are men that have said things to me they wouldn't even say to their wicked sons and daughters. There are men that have said things to me they wouldn't even say to their wicked sons and their daughters. They will not say with the same volume of speech and with the same attitude. Able men. Strong men. Men that fear Yah. Men that have a yare, a reverence for Yah because they know that Yah sends his servants, his ebbet, his messengers. He said men that such fear Yah, they must be men of Torah, men of the wisdom of Torah, or men of Ibat, men of truth. This is what they must be. They must be men of truth, and they must hate that uh, covetousness. Men coveting things. Men coveting things for their lust. Men looking to gain things for them. 
Men coveting after their own desire, their own passion. Men coveting other men, wives. Men looking on women and coveting them. That's wrong. You cannot, Israel. You cannot cover another man's wife. You cannot cover a woman. Yad joins a man and a woman. And this is what Yad betsa, betsa, betsa. You cannot covet. You must hate any kind of covetousness. I don't care what it is. Whether you covet a slice of pound cake. Whether you covet a new dress or pair of pants or shoes. Or you covet the lust of your own flesh. See, this kind of man here delights himself in Yah. Because Yah gives him the desires of his heart and he doesn't covet. He doesn't break the Torah of Yah. He doesn't covet. Now, I frankly don't give a damn if you don't like what I'm saying. And your whole attitude changed. Undoubtedly, it has identified you. Hallelujah. And so that's why you don't like it because you know that you fit the criteria of what I'm speaking. You know that. And so your attitude began to be swayed by your own covetousness of your own lives. And you don't want no true messenger. He says, men that fear Yah love truth, hating, so nay. They must hate anything that will prosper for their own or profit in their own flesh. Exodus 18.21. He says, men that love the truth, that hate covetousness. He says, and you place such over the house of Yisraeli. He commanded Moshe to place them. He said, you place them over a thousand, and the rulers of hundreds, and the rulers of fifties, and the rulers of tens. All of that is significant. I will teach that one day. I want to uh, emphasize above all things, uh, the fire started on the Shabbat. Quote, that man down there, he starts fires uh, on the Shabbat, unquote. I will not command anyone to start a fire on the Shabbat. I will not break the Torah of Yah. No one. I will not. It's amazing that words fire. It is ush. Same as enunciated with man ish, I S H, and A Y S H. It sounds the same, but it's spelled. You enunciate the very same. We're going to identify the fires first, all right? Hear this quickly in the book of Romeo. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 14. There's a reason why men must qualify for the position. And men like to gather with other men and men qualify each other. Because I think that I have shown you things that you didn't know. So they think that they, that's, that's the substance of their qualification. Unless a man is able, unless a man is full of the ruach, unless a man is full of the wisdom of Yah, he is not able to guide nor teach the people of Yah. If a man has covetousness, he's coveting, he's greedy, he's trying to profit, he's trying to betza, he is not a man of the qualifications of a zakhain he may be a zakin, an elderly man, an old man, but that doesn't qualify him uh, as a man that, uh, whereby the Torah proceeds out of him. Because when a man meditates, when he haga, when he meditates in the Torah, it brings about the, the power of that speech from his heart. He speaks Torah. He brings about revelation of Torah. He brings about wisdom of Torah. That's what he brings about. It is seen in his poor name. We will show you that. It is seen in the visits. When Moshe came down, he had a light about him like no one in the camp. And when a man is wise in the counsel of Yah, you see it in his eyes. You see it in his features, Yisraya. The same thing with the daughters of Tizayon. Can you eat? Can you mothers tell when your children are disgruntled? Can you tell when they're upset? And so yet, we as a nation of people, we're that ignorant, uh, we can't tell when one another are upset. You can tell when I don't like what you say, but I can't tell uh, you don't like what I say. It is amazing, isn't it? It shows the frivolity and the stupidity of a people. Uh, that's what we always have in this tremendous spiritual conflict within us. 
We're torn between the flesh and the ruach. We need messenger and strong men that are able. We need men that are hired. Men that are full of life. And not of that damn folly. There was one here recently, every word that they said, it was always laughter. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's wrong. You have that in you. There's some deep ravine, a spiritual inadequacy there. I watch this individual. Because nothing gets past me. You know why? Because I examine myself with a greater examination and I examine others. Because I will let people get by with things for a long time. Then I will speak. It's wrong. I don't care if you don't like me. It's amazing that people will get pissed off at people that are kind to them. You don't get mad at the damn world. A messenger of Yah can be kind. He can, he can do right by you. And you get pissed off when he tells you about you. When he reveals unto you your inadequacy, you get pissed off at him. You get mad. And yet you will say, I love you. I appreciate you. don't appreciate a damn thing. You will get pissed off at him. You will get upset. You will become perturbed. He loves the people. He corrects them. You will get upset with me. But you won't get upset with you. You get mad at me, but you won't get mad at you. You will denounce me, but you won't denounce you. Well, I got to, you don't have a damn thing. Huh? That's the way we are. Let's see what the messenger Shahu says in the book of Romeo, Romans chapter 7, verse 14. First of all, he says, for we know we are the Romans 7, 14. We know. We're dealing with spiritual principles. What is that of the Ruach? It is full of the life. It is the mind of Yah. It is the purpose of Yah. It is the will of Yah. He said, for we know that the Torah is spiritual. It is full of the power of the Ruach. It is Yah presenting Himself. He presented it by His voice. Through Yahshua, He presented the fullness of that power through the living substance of Torah. It is a spiritual thing. And Saul said, but I'm carnal. I'm fleshly. And I'm soul under, under sin. Not that he had a propensity to sin and a will. But I'm soul unto the nature of my flesh. And that's why the spiritual law must transform me. It must change my mind. That's what the Torah does. It brings about a transforming it changed everything. When we understand the impact of the Ruach, it transforms us, Yisrael. It transforms us. And what Shaul was saying, although I know that the Torah is spiritual, it's full of life. It's full of the living wisdom of Yah. It's full of the, the tremendous hukmah, the understanding of the Da'at of Almighty Yah, the being. He said, I'm a man that I've labored in the flesh. I have sown to great depths of my flesh. And I am sold unto sin. What was he saying? Can I tell you? For we know that sin is the transgression of the Torah. He said, I think I know how to apply the principles of Torah. But I just don't. It is through the spiritual revelation of Yahshua. Now, read the rest of the chapter. Now I understand what this is about. Unless a man is spiritual, he cannot judge anything. He cannot discern anything. That's why he is so easily moved and removed. He doesn't want a spiritual law because he's sold under to his own selfish pride. In his own wickedness. He thinks he is the possessor of something. He's not the possessor. There's nothing worth a damn thing in our flesh. You don't have a damn thing. There is no tough thing. As far as my flesh, there is nothing uh, that is excellent. Uh, for we know that Yah is tough. Uh. Yes. We must have the spiritual law of Yah in us. Uh, the spiritual Torah to present anything that are tough, any kind of fruit. Yeah. So you find these weak men. Because they're not able, they will, they will try to front themselves as able when a man is able, you can see him reach down and pick up 10 pounds. 
He can't pick up 35 pounds. He can bear what Torah puts upon him because he has the power of Yeshua, the testimony of great resolve and great strength in his mind. These weak cowards don't have a damn thing. They want to masquerade as though they have great substance and have a damn thing. That's why they can't bear the burden of no one. That's why they're not willing to say, Massa! Yes, a massa. That's how they said it. Yes, a massa. Yes, a massa. Yes, a massa. I'll bear the burden. Hallelujah. Their forefathers understood what the word burden mean. And so they would say massa. M-A-W. S-A-W. Massa. They knew exactly what it meant. You know, it's amazing that people will fight against me that will not even take time to study Torah. I study Torah, Yisraya. No, I'm not the wisest of men, but what I do know, I know, and I can share that with you. I understand what I teach. Although I don't understand the words as they flow from me at that moment, but I understand what I'm teaching. And I will show you that. Quote, I preach down there, start fires on the Shabbat. Unquote. We must come to the resolution today because if I defy the spiritual law and even the law of Shabbat, woe unto me. Can I proceed a little further? I want to define the word ush. A-Y-S-H. Fire. I want to do it in the terminology of the Hebraic, the Ethiopic, the Ugaritic language, the tongue that are languages that are in the close resemblance of the Hebraic of a language of our forefathers of the sons of Ibram Hebrews I want to define it not according to my speculation or my knowledge but what it says it says the word Ush. this is what it defines now I must define this in order to show us I'm defying the Shabbat will unto me it says the word Ish it is Yahweh's anger Fire for cooking, roasting, parching. It is a supernatural fire. That's what it defines. And what a fire does, it always produces one thing. It brings light, doesn't it? It does bring light. So if there's a fire kindled, it must bring lights of the ore, the ma'o, to the situation the circumstance that it may be resolved or there may be a remedy found. That's what it implies. So the fire always brings light. So we see the dimension of that fire, the ush and the natural, and also in the spiritual realm as well. We see that, Yisraya. We cannot, I cannot command any of the Achim to start a fire on the Shabbats. We must get clarity. Shaul says, For we know that the Torah is spiritual. I am carnal, soul unto sin. For we know that sin is a transgression of Yah's Torah. Can I read the command what it says? Well, it says in the book of Exodus, Shemoth, Exodus. Chapter 35, verse 2. This is the command of Yah. And we are going to understand as we scour and search the Torah for the spiritual revelation understanding of this profound command. Exodus 35, 2. Yah commands, as Torah commands, six days shall work be done. And on the seventh day there shall be to you a Kodash day. It is a Shabbat of Shabbatot, of rest. Not for us. Does it say that it is a day of rest? Is a Shabbat of rest to who? To Almighty Yah. First of all, we confuse the issue. He did not say it was a rest to you. He said it is a Shabbaton. 
through Yah. It is the time to cease from all your labor and your rest to Yah. How do we understand that? Well, that's why we need the Zakhain. Men that are able men, full of wisdom and understanding to teach and to instruct us. It is a Shabbat to Yah. So whosoever does any work, any melcha, any kind of work, uh, therein, that individual shall die prematurely. There shall be no spiritual resolve in that man, that woman. They shall not have the light of Torah. They shall not have uh, the wisdom of Torah. And he commands us here. The next verse is as vital uh, as the f this verse 2. And he says unto us, we shall not sbara. We shall not kindle. He means what he says. We shall not kindle. No! Oosh, no fire. Throughout your habitation upon the Shabbat day. You shall not kindle a fire upon the Shabbat day. You shall not kindle any fire upon the Shabbat day. We must, above all things, get clarity and understanding. We need wise men today, not pretenders, strong, beautiful men. Their words are beautiful, their beautiful voice. I don't care about their broken English, damn English, but we need strong men. You should not even bear. You should not kindle. You should not kindle. I want you all to keep that word bara. 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 Keep that in your subconscious as I teach. Men don't know how to search out truth because you can't teach them. They're arrogant. He said, don't even kindle a fire on the Shabbat. That's the fourth command. Quotes, you know that preacher down there, he kindles a fire on the Shabbat, unquote. The person has never been here, has not fellowship with me because the person doesn't like me because of what I teach and say. The person is a coward because they don't have the intestinal fortitude and the veracity of strength to confront me. They're cowards. You shall not bear a fire and if on the Shabbats. I want to examine this word for a moment. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he commanded Moshe to ordain those elders to bear the burden, to bear it, the burden of his people. And for Moshe to teach the commands, the wisdom of the command of Omar Yad. That's why the same Ruach that was upon Moshe, when he laid hands on him, it fell upon the Yahushua. The same thing with Elishia and Elijah. Same thing. No different. We come with our own spirits which are going to damn us into hell. Let's pay attention to what Torah teach. The prophet, Yeremiah, Jeremiah. He speaks about the wisdom of Yah in this verse, Jeremiah 17, verse 22. He says here, Yisrael, he says, neither, lo, indeed, cannot be. 
He says, neither carry forth a massa, a burden. That we are succumb with the load of our mind and the great burden upon us. We have this delight, but it's not in the Torah of Yah. That's why we can sit in the presence of Yah on the Shabbat and our minds are consumed with those activities outside of His presence. He says, neither carry out of your home. Husband and wife got opposition. Children and mama, he said, don't even carry it. Out of your bed. This is what the prophet says. The nobi. Neither carry forth a burden out of your bed, your house, on the Shabbats. As the old folks will say, you leave it at home. But I got something. I'm going to answer this. Don't worry. You, you must have all the connected scripture. Okay, to understand this. We're going to clear it all up. Don't worry. He said, you should not carry this out of your house on the Shabbat. You should not do any work on the Shabbat. He said, but set apart, separate yourself. You, the Shabbat, as I. Now, you know who this I is. It is Almighty Yah. And he used the word as I, Yah. Now, he survived. He said, I have survived. I command it. But Yah says, I've commanded you. He's, he said, I have the authority, I have the power, and no one can denounce what I say. Yah says, I've commanded you not to have this massa, this burden on the Shabbat. That you're worried about kindling the fire and lighting the fire, the bara. You should not. I wonder if the house is warm. You don't take it out of the beats. Not only the physical house, but the spiritual house above all. I will prove it out as I teach you today. You can denounce it or you can receive it. It makes no difference at all. And this is what we bring to Yah's house. In the natural and in the spiritual. Now I want to deal with that word, the Massa. Can I for a moment? You don't understand this. Unless you draw all the connect, connect, connected dots. You're trying to pick up one thing. Uh, I think you understand it. You don't understand. I want to show us one of the most profound burdens that we bear. This is a spiritual offer. We know that the Torah is spiritual. Uh, and I'm called a soul unto my own uh, bits, uh, My own lust. My own covetousness. I want to begin with one of the most pronounced burdens. What masters and drives us. David says in Tehillim. Hallelujah. Psalms. Chapter 38. Verse 4. David says here. He says. And I want you Yisrael to hear. Hold that in Yeremiah 17.22. Because we're going to revert back to that as I teach this. All right. He said, you don't bring no Messiah, no load, no kind of delight but what Yah commands us uh, into the house of Yah on the Shabbat. Does he say that? Yeah. He says that, doesn't he? David says in Psalms 38, 4, he says, Yah, for my, for my ovin, ovin, for my iniquity, my depravity, my wickedness, my sin. He said, my iniquity is a gold over my rusha. Your sure is the rusha of man. It has gone over my head. He says, as a heavy massa. You got this heavy load. We come into Yah's house on the Shabbat. We're burdened down with our own iniquity. With our own wickedness. With our own depravity, our own depraved minds. Uh, that's where your rush is. Uh, where is your mind? It is in your rush. Uh, and you bear the weight of those wicked concepts and thoughts. Yes, you do. Uh, your pride and your arrogance. Uh, he says so heavy. Don't forget that word heavy. I want to show you what it does now. I'm a student's man. I'm a tell me. I'm a naha. A Nazarite. He said, my iniquity, my ovin, my ovon, 
It has gone over my rush, my head. Yah is the head of Yahshua. And Yahshua is the head of man. Man is the head of the woman. So your own iniquity uh, even supersedes your head. The wife allowed that to supersede her man. And the man in his juvenile state of mind, uh, he allows his own iniquity to supersede Yahshua HaMashiach. And that's why we're in the dismal mess that we're in. That's why we need men to teach us. We need all the men and the wisdom of the age shine with great delight uh, of the knowledge of what they have experienced in life. Uh, you don't find that even in the countenance uh, of many men today. Hallelujah. It's almost like a man 70 years old, uh, got black hair and a black mustache, uh, knowing that he got gray hair, and it doesn't even match the features of his face. I would never do something like that. My gray matches the features of the lines of my face. Uh, it accents the beauty of the lines of my face uh, and the age as I grow old. Uh, and for me to step in here with my mustache all black, blacker than blacker, I got hair that is so black, that's, that's superficial. Uh, that's the beauty of the horrid haired man. Uh, that's the beauty of a horrid haired woman. Uh, that her gray accents her lines. She doesn't masquerade herself. And her lines look beautiful. Even I see wrinkles. Uh, her hair. And the grayness of her hair. Gives beauty. You look at something so false. Man you're 60 years old. You don't have one drop of gray hair. You wicked child of hell. You silly Jezebel of a woman. Listen to me. Have he said for my iniquity. Has gone over my rush as a heavy massa, as a heavy load, as a heavy burden, Yisrael. I got to pay this tribute to my flesh. Every time I go into the house of Yah, I got to pay. That's what massa is. That's when he said, Yasamasa. He had to pay tribute to the one that put the load on him. And so when you go into Yah's house, you have brought this heavy load of Ovon. You must pay a tribute to that iniquitous, that depraved, wicked way of yours and your wicked, delusional ways full of depravity. And so that's why your mind doesn't delight in Torah, but you delight in the perverseness of that massa, the heavy burden of your pride, your arrogance, and your wickedness in Yah's house. We cannot kindle a fire. We cannot carry a burden into Yah's house on the Shabbat. We're dealing with the spiritual law. And so we allow that to be this heavy burden. And he says, they are too heavy for me. You tell me that no one can discern the heaviness of your countenance? When a man's shoulders are droop, you know he's bearing something. Yeah. When a man's head hangs low, you know he's carrying something. Yeah. And he said, they're too heavy for me. I can't even bear them. My own iniquity. My own transgressing of the Torah. For we know our... I'm soul unto sin, for we know the law of the Torah is spiritual. I am caught a soul unto sin. We're soul unto those activities. We take delight in it. And we don't want it to be exposed. My friend, I don't start fires on the Shabbat. None. None. Or you all get quiet because you, you all don't understand what I understand. Hallelujah. You can get this by sitting down for an hour or two. It takes hours and days and time. You got to search the entire book. And everything will conclude when I'm finished. Oh, we're talking about the Masa, are we not? The only way we're going to know what the Masa is, Scripture must identify what Masa is, right? It must identify what is the low, the heavy yoke. We know that our own iniquity is one, all right? Moving on. It says in Devarim, the book of uh, Deuteronomy, ch chapter 1. <clears throat> Deuteronomy, chapter 1, and verse 12. This is what Moshe says unto Yah. And that's why Yah provided them judges. Shoftim. He says, uh, 
Moshe says, uh, how can I? This is Moshe in the first person. Uh, he said, how can I myself alone uh, bear? He says, the durak, or the covers and the burdens, uh, or the burdens uh, and your burdens and your strife. You reap. How can I bear the burdens of this nation, Yah? How can I bear that? How can I bear this massa, the heavy load that they have put on me through their reap? We're full of strife, are we not? We're full of contention. We don't think that that is a great burden on the Shabbat. You come before Yah, you cannot offer up clean hands unto Yah because of your own reap. Your own strife, you are contentious with Yisra'ya, you are contentious with one another, you deny, you denounce, that's what we do. And we're full of such damn frivolity and falsehood, and we pretend that we care, you don't give a damn. Yah says, don't bring that out of your house. Don't bring that out of your rush, out of your head. Don't bring that out. The Torah is spiritual. That's what he commands us, Yisra'ya. How can I bear? How can I bear this cumbersome, this uh, Torah, or the Torah, this great law of the minds of the people? He says, and even Yisra'ya, your strife, uh, your disputing, uh, your acquisitions, uh, your accusations, and your lies, uh, and your corruption. He said, I can't bear that. You cannot, com- you cannot bear your own rib. You cannot bear the cumbersome of your lies uh, and your corruption uh, on the Shabbat. You bring that before Yah without the dam of Yahshua. That's why we bring no kind of burden. Uh, nothing that masters our mind that uh, has laid such a burden upon us. Uh, our minds are not free from it. Uh, our minds are not free from our lies and our corruption, uh, our disdain, our hatred. Uh, our minds are not free from our own arrogance uh, and our own pride on the Shabbat. Oh, I'm going to finish this today. I don't give a damn whether you love me. He said, I can't bear it. I don't have the ability to. I'm so glad of your sure. He tells us to, first of all, take. Take this bread, this lechem. Eat. We must eat the living Torah. He says, for my yoke is easy. My burdens of light. It's going to be summed up in the last times that there's one thing that you will know about Yisra'ya. I'll conclude with that one verse, all right? Let me proceed, Father. Hallelujah. These are burdens that the Masa or the masters of our minds... And we don't want to deal with what caused these burdens upon us. We don't want to deal with that. We don't want to deal with what is the cause of this. Why is this ovon, this ovin, this heavy burden, my rush, my mind cannot function in the Torah of Yah. Come on, think within yourself for a moment. And answer yourself, does your mind delight in Torah? Just be honest. Hell, you delight more in fried chicken feet, more than you do in Torah. Give you a damn bologna sandwich. No, not a bologna meat sandwich. You delight more in that. Give you Walmart, Dollar Mart, and Kmart. You got more excitement about that than Torah. What has been, uh, what has been the orchestrator of the burdens upon us? That we bring this before Yah on the Shabbat. I, I want to show you here. It says in Ezra, third Ezra, write the verses down. I want you all to challenge me, you that are out there, Yabrach, Achmai Zachin, David, Ak Davis, out there in Los Angeles, and those that are gathered with you, uh, write them down. Go back over them and study. As a student, we'll study. You don't even have to read Torah during the week, uh, you study the teachings of the Achim. That's all you have to do. You take down what they tell you and you go back and prove it. Uh, prove where they send you. Uh, like the Bereans, they search the Torah and see if those things were so. Because they sound too excellent. They sound too tough. It says in 3rd Ezra, 
14.14. What calls my burdens, our burdens on the Shabbat? Write it down, 3rd Ezra 14.14. 14. It says for us to let go from you, your own mortal thoughts. We don't allow our mortal thoughts to go or, or we abandon them, do we? Why? He can say, cast away the burden of man. And he says, put off now your weak nature. You're weak. When we began to resolve things by our own mortal thoughts, it's a weakness that is presented. That's why he gives us a Torah that we adjudicate everything through the Torah, not through your damn mortal thoughts. He said, put them off. Take them out of your mind. It's your own mortal thoughts, your own concepts uh, that you develop, your own likes and your dislikes. Uh, these are great masters of your mind. Uh, they're masters that rule you. Uh, they're burdens that captivate you. Uh, and these are the strongholds. It's your own mortal thoughts. It begins with you, doesn't it? You see what it says there? Cast away your own or your mortal thoughts. You got thoughts that they are wrong. And these are mortal thoughts. He say, cast away the burdens of not men, of man. That's your burden, man. And woman, that's your burden, your mortal thoughts. Put off now the weak nature. That's the weak nature. The nature of strength is a spiritual law. That's your massa. That's what rules your mind. That's what you bring before Yah. That's why you can't lift your hands. That's why there's no great delight in singing unto Yah. That's why everything is about you. I'm hurting here. This is happening. You don't delight in the power of His truth to heal our minds and to heal our bodies. We must cast off the mortal thoughts and the burden of man. That is the weak nature. You don't bring that weak nature before Yah. Not on the Shabbat. You don't bring that into his house on the Shabbat. He told Yahushua, I want you to be strong. And to be of good courage. Excellent courage. Tough courage. I want you to be an able man. Higher, full of life and full of strength. Full of the wisdom of Torah. Where are the men like that? We must challenge ourselves, men. You always want to challenge someone to see what they know and what excellence of knowledge they got, but you never challenge your weakness and your mortal thoughts. Our thoughts are mortal. And that's why we're burdened down. That's why we don't have delight in Torah. That's why we don't have great rejoicing in Torah. I don't give a damn if you can't move. When y'all commands us to do a thing, we should do it. We tell us to, to rejoice, we should rejoice. But your mortal thought tells you not to rejoice. And it becomes a heavy load to you, doesn't it? Y'all say, don't come to my house that way. When he tells us, let everything that have breath praise you, you don't even do that. Because your mortal thoughts say, well, I don't have to do that. You're a damn liar. Yeah. Let Yah be true and every man a liar. Yeah. And that's what we don't do because we don't, frankly, don't give a damn. Yeah. We frankly don't give a damn. Yeah. And we think we're wise and spiritual. You're not wise. Yeah. Can I move a little farther? Yeah. This is something we don't want to deal with right here in Shirak. Write it down. Shirak 21 and verse 16. Shirak 21, 16. The talking uh, of fool, of an evil, uh, a stupid man uh, is like a burden. We talk foolish all the damn time. We talk foolish in Yah's house to our mind. Shirak 21, 16. We talk foolish with each other. We act foolish. We always foolish. It is like a burden. You find a man that is full of laughter and folly. It's a burden. It grieves me. I don't like it. I don't like it, men. I don't like the laughter. I don't like it. I know what it does. The talking of fools is like the burden of a long journey. Who likes a long journey? I don't like to drive over three hours. Eight, ten, twelve hours. My friend here is just getting warmed up. He's, I'll drive for you. He's, man. 
I don't like to drive over 100 miles. And that's the honest truth. Chirag says the wisdom speaks the talking. Foolish men, the talking of a fool. You go from the presence of a fool when you find he has no wisdom. When he has no knowledge of Yah. He says, like a burden on a journey. But delight shall be found in the lips of the wise. You find wise men, Shirak 21, 16. You want delight, let the wise man speak. Let the wise daughter of Tizion speak. Don't let the fool's lips speak because it is a burden. It is a Messiah, Yisrael. It increases the ovon. It increases the agony of your iniquity. That's what it does. We shall neither carry, as Yeremiah says. He said, don't even carry forth a burden out of your house on the Shabbat. You don't allow it to go out of the house of your mind. The bed. You don't come to Yah's house thinking about your wicked sons, your wicked daughters, your wicked mom and your wicked grandmammy. It's wrong, it's wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked. Give a damn who you are. Can I proceed a little further? We're going to find out who I am today, all right? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It says here in the book of Yeshaya, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 46. I want to read two verses here. Isaiah 46, verse 1 and 2. There's nothing that is more cumbersome to our minds than the idolatry, the idol worship of me. And we bring this into the Shabbat. The damn God of your belly cries out. It's almost time to eat. It's always about feeding your own flesh. We don't give a damn about Yah. And he set before us all manner of delight. And we're working about, we're about the idol. The idol of our mind. Hear this. What the prophet says in Isaiah 46. 1. He says. Bell bow down. Nebo is stoop. Their idols or their asab. Were upon the beast. Now they're idols. Now he's talking about how that. The burden or the many idols that they had upon the beasts. Uh, just like we have placed our idols uh, upon the, even the beasts of our own mind. That, uh, that, that Nasa, that Nahash, that beastly spirit of ours. Uh, I can see why Yah says he's going to cause the spirit of beast and man to mingle among his nation. I understand that, Yisraya. He said, because of Nebo, the, the, the asses or the animals that bore the weight of their riches and their wealth, uh, they were bored down with idols. He says, we're upon the beasts and upon the cattle. Uh, your carriages were heavy burdened. Do you understand that? This beastly spirit of ours. This Nahash. A mind that rejects Yah's truth. It is a mind that is burdened down like a beast. And so he gives us the representation of that, of the idols uh, that bear down on the backs of the beasts. Uh, and it's our own idols uh, that bear down on our backs. It is your own God uh, that bears such weight upon us. Uh, and we see that trans, uh, we see that transforming us uh, into beastly looking individuals. Well, that's just the truth. Uh, in our body type, in our physical appearance, uh, the way we look, Yisrael. Yeah. You can mad at me, you might as well love me. Yeah. Yeah. He says, they are a burden to even weary the beast. Even Nahash, the burden or the beast spirit is burdened down with the great Massa, the burdens of our idolatrous minds on everything but Yah. We spend every waking hour on everything that burdens us down but Yah. And we bring that to his house. We're burdened down with our own ovin, our own vone, our lies, our shekhar, our corruption. It burdens us down. That there is no delight in Torah. It says the beast now, they stoop. And that's how we look today. We are people that stoop down. They stoop. 
they bow down together. They could not even deliver the massa, the burden. But themselves, we have gone into shibuth, into captivity. Our minds are in captivity. We're captivated by everything but the love of Yah and the love of Torah. Our minds are captivated in captivity with the God of our own belly. The lust of our betam, the greed of our belly, the insatiable, unsatisfying drive and cravings of our own bellies. There's nothing I crave. No money, no houses, no land, nothing. I don't crave nothing. Nothing. I don't need no special foods and I don't need that. Put something before me. And the best meals I enjoyed in a long time was yesterday, sir. Had mama to salt up me some collards. She had me salad, so I used the collard greens to be the, my dressing. Oh, that's right. All my lettuce and onions and tomatoes. Nah, what a dressing. She put a little coconut oil in that, that pure coconut oil. I like that kind. Had me a baked potato and a little protein, and I was happy. Got some for the day, too. I don't need nothing special. I need the lechem, the bread offering, the bread of life. Yeshua is that bread of life. Hallelujah. That is the bread of life. So even our beast nature cannot even bear the burdens of the massa, the great laden of yoke upon us. And we bring this to Yah's house. That's why we can't offer unto him anything that is acceptable. He would that we will lift up clean hands. Dachor. Everywhere. I would that all men will lift up clean hands. The yards. And then Barak to bow in supplication before him. Yet we want to blame everyone for our own burdens. All of this deals with us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I know the yoke of your shoe is easy. And his burden is light. And the only way you're going to understand, you must take the lechem, the bread of light, and learn of him. You must take this Torah delight and learn. You must be taught. You must learn. You must learn other ways of Yah. And we don't like to learn that. We don't, first of all, like to learn our deficiencies and our insufficiencies uh, and what things we're not capable of doing. Uh, we want to show everyone what we are capable of doing. Uh, you must take this living Torah and learn of him. And then you'll understand that the yoke of what brings you close to him, uh, it, is, uh, it, it is easy. It's not difficult. Uh, and the Torah delight, uh, that burden is not heavy. It's only your idols and the idols of your mind bear you down. It bears down that beastly spirit. It bears down the nature of your nahash. This mind that has negated the commands of Yah. That says on the fourth commandments, I can do my fire. I can light me a fire. I can take any burden before Yah. No, that's not what it says. These men that think that they know, and they're spiritual, they're weak men. As the old Baptist liar would say, well, 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 don't do as I do, just do as I say. This is the spirit of those men. Yeshua shows us. Here in Matithia, Matthew. He says in the book of Matthew, 23 and verse 4. He talks about those for they buy heavy. They deduct from Torah things that are so false. For they bind heavy burdens that are so grievous to born or to bear. And then what they do, they lay them upon the shoulders of those. Uh, they lay them upon men's shoulder, but they themselves will not move one inch or one finger. To bear that burden. 
They're those that will bring you the burdens of their idolatrous lies and their ovine and their corruption, but they will not move one inch, they will not move one scintilla to bear the burden of that uh, egregious thing against Yah. And that's what this religious mindset does. It caused a great burden to be upon the people. Well, the Torah says that. You don't even know what the Torah says, you damn fool. And so they cause you to be captivated uh, with great burdens. Uh, and it is burns, uh, born, uh, it's bronze on you. Uh, it is too heavy for anyone to bear. And yet they themselves will not bear it. They will burden you down with lies and folly and their foolish talk. That's why they come to empty their folly upon us. Uh, and we carry that in the time of rest. It is Yah's Shabbat. And our rest is unto Yah. We don't start no fire on the Shabbat. Do not start a fire on the Shabbat. Don't look at me silly. Just listen and you'll learn. That's why we need able men. Every man is not able. You're going to find out that this man is able. He has life of this truth in him. He believes it. I like to establish things. So we'll know where we're going. You're not going to understand what I read in Shemoth 23, 2 and 3. Unless you understand the process of that. How it reveals the spiritual revelation of all things to us. Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> Hallelujah. We bring no burdens upon Yah's Shabbats. I want to give you a demonstration here of the supernatural ish or the fire of Yah. You can't understand the fire that we start unless you understand this. It says here in Bereshit, hallelujah. Bereshit, Genesis 19.24. I want you to hear this. It says... Then Yah rained down upon Sidon and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire. It came from Yah, and it tells us it came out of the Shemaim. He rained down upon those cities, fire and brimstone. This is what we call the supernatural fire that nothing can Quince it. Nothing can put it out. The five yard now. Nothing. There's a fire that is kindled among Yisraya that nothing can put it out. Well, give us references of the fire of Yah. Again in Exodus, Shemoth 3 2. Exodus 3 2. Now, this is the same word that is used, ush, fire. Exodus chapter 3 verse 2. It says, And the Melak of Yah appeared to Moshe in a flame of fire. Out of the midst of a bush. And Moshe looked and behold the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. The bush was not consumed. But yet it used the word ush. The supernatural fire, it burns, it consumes. And yet this bush was not consumed. The very nature of Yah is a fire. His word is a fire. Dibarim, chapter 4, and verse 24. Dibarim 4, 24. It says, for Yah, your Abba, he is a consuming fire. Does it say that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24? Dibarim, Deuteronomy 4, 24. He is even a Chana. He is a jealous Abba. He is a consuming fire. Not just a fire, a consuming fire. We shall not bear the burdens of our iniquity. We should cast all of our burdens upon 
Yeah, for he cares. He is the one that bears our burdens. Well, that's what it says in the Brit Hadassah, but that's what David says uh, in Psalm 55, 22. This is your sure speaking. It says in Psalms 55, 22, cast your massa, your burdens, upon Yah, and he shall sustain you. He is the one that sustain us. Yah shall never, Yah shall never, Yah shall never suffer the Sodi to be moved. He never suffers the righteous to be moved. That's why we must cast all of our burdens upon Yah, our Messiah. We must cast our idols up to the altar of Yah that they must be consumed uh, with the ish, the fire. They must be broken. Uh, they must be broken in the smithereens. Uh, that's why we must lay before the altar, come before the altar. And then we began with confessing our own sins. Confessing our own. We don't do that. Just get real. You don't confess nothing about you. You confess everything about me and others. We don't confess nothing about me. Tell me when you have gone to one and confess me to you. You confess me to that one, but you don't confess you to them. That's what we are. Now we don't confess me. I'm shallow and I'm weak, man. No, we will say that he is shallow and he is weak. You better watch her because she's a liar. You don't say that I am one of the most notorious liars on the face of the earth. You will say that he's lazy, he doesn't want to work, but you will never say I'm lazy as hell. You will say she's shiftless and trying to find a way out of work. You will never say I'm the master of deception and lies. Because I don't like to work. You will never say that. And so you have no sense of burdens. Your ovon tells you your transgressing of Torah tells you. Because you esteem yourself higher than others, don't you? You don't esteem no one. You don't delight in another man's works. And you have no works of Sadiq. But you don't delight in that. You don't delight in the Achot works. But yet you have no works of righteousness. And that's Yisra'ya. And yet we think. Because we come to Yah's house on the Shabbat. We're keeping the Shabbat unto Him. And we rest. So Yah, this is the Shabbat we rest in the correction of his Torah. It corrects us. It set us right. And we think we're right. Yet our minds are filled with burdens. Our bayat. It's not our mind, this body, the house of Yah. Hallelujah. We see the defining of what this supernatural fire does. It is a purger. The fire of Yah. We must have the fire kindled in the midst. Don't kindle a fire on the Shabbat. Yah must kindle a fire here in the midst. Did I not define some of the attributes of the fire of Yah? Well, let me move a little further. Did I not read in Dibarim 4.24 that Yah is a consuming fire? Hear this in Dibarim 32.22 then. It says, for a fire is kindled in my anger. Did I not read in Devarim 23 that we should not kindle bara? Did I not say keep that in your mind? But as far as kindled, isn't it? In his ebra, his af, his anger, and shall burn to the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase. And set on fire the fountains of the mountains. We should not kindle a fire on the Shabbat. We should not kindle a fire on the Shabbat. 
Can I give us some revelation of the fire that we should not kindle on the Shabbat? Will you believe me if I read it from the book? Do we not read that his jealousy is like fire? He is a consuming fire. Did not the fire burn in the Melach never, or, or the bush never was consumed? Did I not read that Yah is a consuming fire? Yet he says here, as we read in, in Debarim, he says that it shall burn, Debarim 32 and 22, he says his anger shall burn to the lowest of hells and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the fountains of the mountains. Does it not say that? There's a fire that we can, the Yah says, damn it, I'm going to set you on the fire of hell. I want to read those fires that Yah commands us not to kindle. A fire is kindled in his anger. The Torah teaches us in Eob as Bildad reprove Eob. And Job, the book of Eob, the book of Job, chapter 18, verse 5. There's a fire that we ought not start. It is a wicked, it is a fire. The word Russia or Risha that destroy Risha destroyed the acts of the wicked the Russia. You understand? The word Risha is the acts, the activities, activities of the depths of such depravity that is beyond the understanding of man. Bildad says the EO, Job 18.5. He says, yes. Okay. He says the light of the ore of the Rasha, the light, the fire of the wicked shall be put out. He said, and even the spark, the bara, the kindling of his fire shall not shine. Now how is it that the wicked kindles a fire? He sparks a fire, and he has a fire. There's something in your mind that illuminates such wickedness in us. We don't give a damn about the Shabbat of Yah. There's something in our consciousness that sparked this wickedness. He said, the wicked. He said, even his light, the fire of his mind, it shall not barah, he shall not kindle that fire. That's what he is saying he said, the spark of his fire shall not, it shall not enlighten. When you find a man that is wicked, you find a woman that is wicked when they speak, it doesn't enlighten anyone. It doesn't bring about any kind of knowledge and wisdom, a revelation of Torah. They don't enlighten anyone. When you find a wicked man, he can talk all damn day. No one is going to be enlightened. When you find a man that is ever full of folly and a damn simpleton of a Jezebel, of a woman, she would never enlighten anyone. Because their wickedness, the spark, the bara, or the, the bara, the kindling of their wickedness. Uh, yes, I'm going to put it out. And so they talk folly. They talk with full of folly and foolishness. That's what they do. The conversations are never about Yah. It's about covetousness. It's about Betsa, a damn greed, and a damn loss that they can't control. I don't care what the loss is. I don't care what the greed is, it's wrong. I don't care what it is, it's wrong. It's an idol, it's a god, it's a beast. You bear a burden upon your beast flesh. I don't care how much you get, you never get enough. I don't give a damn how much you get, you never get enough. I don't give a damn how much you get, you never get enough. I don't care if it's money, I don't care if it's sensual, I don't care what it is, you never get enough. You never. You never get enough. You're never satisfied. So the Torah lets me know that the wicked have a light. Yes, this is not even the bara, the kindling of this spark. Shall not shine. It shall not produce the ma'or, the naga. No one will be enlightened from them. You find one that is wicked, they bring no enlightenment. They have no light. That's why I always tell the Achim, the Zachim, they must watch their faces. And we're too damn dumb, stupid. We fall back into the same clutches of darkness of this beastly nature. Because our minds are not on Yah. We're full of our own damn lust. 
No, as I gave the story of the woman the other day, it wasn't that some physical attraction that she saw. She saw something unique. She saw, saw something that was rare. And I could look in her eyes and I knew that's what it was. So I somewhat greeted her with the removing of my hat. This is the reproof. Here Job was a wise man, but yet the men reproved him. This damn stupid generation, you reprove a fool, you get a blot. You're wicked, you silly jackass. That's what they hated, you're sure. We're going to get to the depths, don't worry. I got you covered. Hallelujah. It is your own wickedness of your own Risha, your wicked ways, that you don't renounce Yisrael. You kindle that when you get up in the morning. The smallest of incident calls you to kindle it against your Ach, against your Achim, and you bring that to Yah's house on the Shabbat. That's why Yahshua tells us to confess our faults one to another. And then what we began to produce is some effectual fervent prayer. That's why we cannot maintain any damn thing for any period of time. That's why we cannot produce the essence of strength to do anything in life. Because we don't have the power to confess. To say I'm weak. I'm a liar. I need help. We don't want to confess that. Here's a question that Eob asked. Or Yah inquired of Eob here in Job, Eob 41.1. Listen to this carefully. We're going to get to the fire that we need to stop kindling. Is that fire going back there? Oh my. Who did that? My, my, my. It says in Job 41 and verse 1, he asks us, can we, Mushak, can you draw? Can you call something to be removed or delay? Can you draw out Livyathan, Leviathan? Can you draw out this monster with a hook? In essence, can you catch a shark with these nice hooks we got around here? Can you catch a thousand pound shark with the reels and the rods you use? Can you draw out this spirit with the hook? Or his tongue with the cord which you let down? Now he's talking about the loshon, the tongue. The law, L-A-W-S-H-O-N, loshon, loshon. It is a device that shuns the Torah. So can you draw him out? This is the question. Can you draw out Nahash by you hooking it? And that's what Leviathan is, this monstrous nature we have uh, as a beastly mindset to defy Torah. Down in the 19th verse of the same chapter, it says, 4119, I don't have time to read it all. Yah says, out of Leviathan's mouth, out of the mouth of this beast, out of the mouth, again the Loshon and the Fef. Don't forget those words. The Bara, the Kenling, the Loshon and the Fef. He says, out of Leviathan's mouth, go burning lamps. Lamps. Do you hear that? The near. We're drawn near by the burning lamps of Leviathan. Not by the lamp of Torah. It is not a light unto us. He says, and sparks of fire leaps out. Leaps out of what? Well, out of his mouth. His sparks of fire. There is a kindling of fire that comes out of his mouth. A kindling. Yah commands us not to even bara to kindle a fire on the Shabbat. Out of his mouth goes the kindling 
of the fire. What has that to do with me? Well, we're going to find out where you, whether you have the spirit of Nahash, whether you kindle a fire. Have we kindled a fire this Shabbat morning? Proceeding on. Mishli, Proverbs 16, 27. It is one thing that the hukmah, the wisdom of his skillfulness, it speaks to us for one thing. It is to prepare our hearts to eat and to dine with Yah. That we make ourselves ready for the coming of Yahshua. Proverbs 16, 27. It says, This worthless, mortal concept you have, this unprofitable desire and passion, he says, A bilia ail man, he digs up evil. You don't know anyone that digs up evil. Oh, you think that's your neighbor? Or it is the man, the hidden man of your own heart that digs up evil that happened two years ago or ten years ago. You're a damn dirty Biliyael. See, that's what an evil man or woman does. They constantly dig up. I'm glad your shoe is not evil because he doesn't dig up my sins. He has cast them away as far as the east is the, from the west. But an evil man, a, a, a man or a woman that has this ovum, this rasha, the evil, listen to me, uh, they dig up evil. Uh, they dig up evil and in his lips, in her lips, uh, there is as a burning fire. He said, that's what these damn dogs do uh, on the Shabbat. Uh, they're evil uh, and they dig up trash in their minds and out of their mouth. Uh, it goes this fire. Of Nahash. It goes this fire of Leviathan. That's what an evil man or woman does. And they kindle this damn fire. You don't kindle a fire on the Shabbat, Yisrael. You don't kindle the evilness and the wickedness. And that's what they do. I read that again. When one is a Biliyael, it is one that is worth it. It's not worth a damn. I don't care if they got on the finest of clothing. I don't care what the woman looks like. I don't care how pretentious their pious nature is. I don't give a damn what it seems like. It says a Biliyael, one is worthless. They're not worth a damn. As my mother would say, quote, in the days... Boy, you're good for nothing, unquote. And they're not worth a damn thing. They have no value. They dig up evil. They dig up rah, evil circumstances. Their mind dig into the evil thoughts. We dig into the evil bins, knowing we have done our ark evil, knowing we have done our hot evil, and we have no damn repentance in us. And you think you go into the kingdom, the father's words will burn down into the lower parts of Sheol in the hell to find your wicked arse. Yeah. We're stupid, we think we're getting by. Yeah. That's why we constantly do that. When you become righteous, you'll understand both time and judgment. The wicked understand not time and judgment, uh, but the righteous man, the righteous woman does. Uh, that's why there's a constant purging and cleansing by the way of the Torah. The Torah convicts them that they're wicked. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what an evil person does. I don't give a damn what my wife did two years ago. If I dig that up, I'm evil. Uh, I don't give a damn what your man did 20 years ago. You've been the dirtiest dog on the face of the earth. You dig that up. That is, a, that is something that prevents you. You're a damn wicked woman. You're a damn wicked man. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting there by them and all of a sudden you remember that. And it, it, it alters your whole attitude for the course of the week. You're a wicked woman. You're a damn dog, man. Yeah. You do that with them, the one that you should love as yourself. You do that with me. You do it with anyone. Your damn pig. You all in the pigsty of your own damn wickedness. And you don't see yourself. We're going to get to it, my friend. I like to make all the pathways clear. 
That's what a Belial man does. They dig up evil. And in their lips there is a, when they talk, you're going to the far consume any righteousness from you. They do it on the Shabbat. There were dogs that once lived here right after the Shabbat. They would go and damn, they would down me for everything. Why? Because their wickedness, that fire were burning down in their hellish guts. Speak against me. Look, I'm the all in the damn world. They're wicked. The children of hell. They didn't produce a damn thing that was worth anything. No, they don't produce a damn thing. Yah brings forth his zira. And they couldn't wait to leave from here to rail against me. I'm still here. I'm still strong. I'm still healthy. You understand. I still have life. It's all right. It's all right. I don't need to defend me. Never have. I wouldn't waste my time defending a worthless thing like me. He is set for my defense. That's all that matters to me. Hallelujah. Can I proceed a little farther? All right. Proverbs says, Mishli 26 and verse 21. As coals are to burning coal. You need coals. I need the coals of that stove over there in my house. So when I drop a piece of wood on there. As coals are to coal. And wood to a fire. So is a madom. When you find contention. Where envy and strife is. There is contention. And every kind of damn evil work there is. And it abides here in the rush. That's why we're heavy. We're burdened down. Just like the beasts of Baal. He says, so is a contentious man. Again, he used the word kindle, doesn't he? That's why I said, don't forget the word barah. Kindle. I'm an ignorant man, so I have to learn by words. That's the only way I learn by words. You're smarter than me, and I have no problem with that. I don't have to show someone that I'm smart. I don't have to show someone the excellence of my stupidity. Because I have nothing, and that's a fact. He's talking about a contentious man. He's talking about a man that is madam. A man that sows strife. A man that doesn't give a damn. A man that uh, has this reap. A strife sower. He says, this man shall kindle this fire. He associates coals to the fire. Wood to the fire. So is this contentious spirit. That I have contention with my issue on the Shabbat or with you, my friend. I got contention in my heart against the nation of Yisrael. You know you got contention in your bosom against the Zira of Yah. You are a damn fool. Even the babies got more sense than that. You got strife in your heart and evil against your heart, against your ark. And you're such a damn coward, you don't have the ability to get it right before the Shabbat. You are a wicked man. This implies for the daughters of Tizayon, or Sion, because the man is her head. And you allow this to dwell in your Ruach, and you bring this in to present the Yah on the Shabbat when you should not allow the weight of that to weight you down. You kindle that fire when you see them. The fire of your hatred. The fire of your anger. Your discontent. The fire of your strife. And you're too much of a damn coward. You don't have the ability of sensitivity or any kind of alarm to say I'm wrong. You are less than a coward. You are a child of Belial. You are a damn worthless piece of dung. And that's a fact, Yisrael. You have no value. And that's just a fact. 
We should have no oaths in our hearts against Yisra'ya. The Shabbat is the time that we rest from it. And if we can rest from it on the Shabbat, we can rest from it every damn day. That's why we must have men that are able to counsel. They are men that are able. They are men that are higher. They have life. And anything that is alive in, the, in your presence, it brings joy. You see a lively flower, you can tell one that is alive from one that is dead. And when one that is alive, you look at it. You, I, sometimes I can't see like I used to. Colors are not as brilliant and vibrant, you know, like they used to. You, you know what I mean. I can't see them. But there are times in the brightness of the sun, I can see and I just... I mesmerized by just to see the brilliancy of the colors and the different colors. It, it just overwhelms me. It just overtakes me. And I can look at that for, for hours. I can look at those fish in the pond, the beauty. I can just sit there and look at it. And I do. So it is the life of wisdom. What a man has that it causes you to just sit still and be quiet. And listen, we don't have many men like that. We don't have many daughters like that. We don't have men like that. They even look dumb. They look stupid. The women look silly. You belittling us? No, you already belittle. You belittling Yah. You don't take this word and eat it. And do what it commands us to do. It's not a yoke that is hard to... It's not a burden. You, you delight in this burden. Uh, because it's easy. Y'all bears our burdens. Uh. Hallelujah. I want to express to us, Yisrael, the fires and a fire that Yah hates on his Shabbat. And there are fires that he kindles on the Shabbat. Same word, A-Y-S-H. The same ush. That's why he made man to be an ush. He's the epitome of fire. His words consume. His words break down and destroy. We can't be some weak little shallow boys. I want you to hear this. And if there's one that could expose this to a depth, no one like Shirak. The writings of the messenger, the teacher, the counsel. Shirak, I would have begun at verse 7. Shirak chapter 7 verse 17. He tells us to humble ourselves greatly. That's what we must do, humble ourselves. And now, that's why we had Kippuram. A day of afflicting oneself. When you began to humble yourself, you afflict you. You began to say, you are wicked, Riach. You are coward. You are insensitive. You don't care for that Ach. You don't like that Achot. I love all these that I am. I just don't play. I went out other day to Sam's. Usually, when I go to Sam, there are those, they know the presence of my Ishara because that's all they've ever seen for all these years. Never do I go without her. And so when they see me, they will say, oh, well, where's the little lady? Where's the missus? And my answers are very short. And she's taking care of business at home. I don't play with them. And so the last time I was there, I, I know this woman, her activities, her actions. She's a silly thing. And so the customer before me, all this laughed and folly. And of course, I, I, you know, I just look with a stern look. I just look at people. And so when I got to the checkout line, checking out, oh, she was full of laughter and folly, but I didn't laugh. I didn't smile. And immediately it was cut off. And her words were very, oh, the man before me, she was full of laughter and talking with me. I don't play it. I don't play it, period. Period. The tone of her whole voice was lowered at everything. I didn't even look at it. Thank you, ma'am. Leave me alone. You don't even have to talk to me because I despise that. 
It brings the woman down to a stupid looking thing. I hate it. And I have no problem with letting them know it. Don't laugh with me. I don't have time to laugh. I need to be crying and weeping. I want to read what Shirat says. Shirat 7.17. He say, humble yourself greatly for the vengeance. We take vengeance, don't we? We have vengeance in our hearts against one another. For the vengeance of the wicked and unrighteous, the evil, the fools of their own uh, nahash. For the vengeance and the unrighteousness of the wicked it is as fire, and the fire of that is like worms, like a dead man. It eats from the inside out. When a man dies, I don't give a damn what you do. The worms are going to get him. And it doesn't take long for the worms to die in the wilderness. It doesn't take months for there to be nothing there. Within minutes when you're dead, the flies began to learn. Somehow, I don't care how cold it is, they found that body. And then the one from the inside, that's what, that's, what, that's what the vengeance are. Oh, I don't have no vengeance. You hold things in your heart on the Shabbat. You know you're wrong. You got something in your damn mind against Israel. You know you're wrong. You have kindled a fire on the Shabbat. It has been kindled all that week and you don't allow it to go out. There's the sparks there. So when you see me, the sparks begin to flare. When you talk to me, the sparks begin to fly. It's superficial and you pretend. Toda, my friend, Aisha, I'm not holding nothing back. When I'm done here, I will be finished for today. Hallelujah. Humble yourself greatly for the vengeance of the wicked and the unrighteous is fire. The same ish, A-Y-S-H, same fire, same fire. Thou shalt not kindle a fire on the Shabbat in your dwellings, in your dwellings. What is your dwellings? Here. This is your dwelling. It comes from your mind. Concepts and thoughts. You dwell in your thoughts, don't you? In your concepts. That's where you dwell. That's how you live by what comes from here. And yet the thoughts of the wicked, that's why he said, humble yourself. Realize that you're nothing but a damn piece of clay. You better realize that you are a worthless piece of thing. Huh? And understand that you are heaven today because of your own iniquity. Yah hates this, Yisrael. It is not only the fire, but it is like the worms that rise up in the body of the dead. It is like the skin worms that eat the body of the dead, Yisrael. That is what it is like. When there is vengeance, when there is thought in your heart to repay or to get back. When you renounce, when you disenfranchise, when you disassociate, you wicked child of hell. Yeah. Immature men and women pretend they're so spiritual. Like, oh, I I'm learning how to do this. Shut your damn mouth. Even your walk speaks more than your talk. You think you're not talking, but the way you walk in your damn floozy speaks more than all of your words. You don't have to talk to be to, 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 to you don't have to talk to be quiet or, or you think you're not talking that makes you quiet. Your damn action speaks more of your folly and your stupidity than your words. It is right, my Zachim. So it begins with the process of Anna. Kill your damn flesh. That's what fasting does. In hell we all can stand a little fasting. I know I can. You may not, but I can. So you began with humbling yourselves. Because your vengeance and the vengeance of those that are without Torah. That's what the wicked is again. Russia. It is without a mind that is developed by Torah. It is one that is already condemned. 
It is one that is already judged. So you cannot, no righteous judgment can proceed out of you. That's why there is always vengeance. That's why when someone says something to you, you're ready to lash out. That's why when someone speaks anything to you, you're ready to show them how great you are. I want to do things perfect. No, you just do things right. You do things according to the Torah. People are so damn stupid. You do things according to the delight of Torah. You're doing it perfect. You do things according to Torah. You're doing it perfect. And you're trying to present your own righteousness, which is nothing but a damn filthy rag, a nida, a bloody rag from a bloody woman at the end of the bloody month. You do according to Torah, you fashion, you asar, you fashion your mind, you complete what Torah says. You are doing that which is perfect, Yisra'ah. Yeah. Anything outside of that, it is a wickedness. And so there's a vengeance inside of us because we don't humble ourselves to say, Why am I? Why? When even you, y'all, do not have vengeance against me. A wicked thing should be in hell. And I have vengeance against my ark. My hurt, and yet you don't take vengeance against your faggot weak son or your bull dagger weak daughter. Talk to me, Yisrael. I'll give you another example here. Shirak 8 3. Shirak 8 3. It tells you do not argue with a chatter, one that loves to talk. Show their side. A wise man, he receives, a wise woman receives the Musa. You correct the word Musa. The wise man, he will love you. Fool, he's going to chatter. You got men that are always chattering and talking. Brother, let me show you this. Brother, I've got a revelation or something here. You have nothing. Because if you had something of great something, you will see that in you. You got something good, great, something you see it in your walk. But a man knows he got a few dollars in his pocket, he walks a little different. Talk to me. Sure he does. You know you got some wealth that makes you act a little different. So if you got a wealth of wisdom, you even look different. You walk different. Your straw is different. You lift your shoulders up and your back is straight. Shirak says, do not even argue with the chatterer. Somebody love to talk and love to keep something going. See, we keep things going on the Shabbat. And we pick them right back up after the Shabbat. We take them into the first day and the second and third day. That's why we love chattering and talking. Yeah. Moosing and muttering, calling on the demons to shut them. It says, do not argue with the chatterer. You ever try to argue with someone to think they know? You in for a hell's fit. He said, do not argue with the chatterer, nor heat wood on his fire. Don't even put wood on the fire of a fool like that. Don't, don't do that. That's why we, we, you, don't, you, you don't put wood on the fire on the Shabbat. You don't you shut a chatterer's mouth up. Shut your damn mouth. Be quiet. Because if you argue with the chatterer, you're going to put wood on their fire and you're going to... Barra, you're going to kindle the fire. And then they become even more abrasive and even more emboldened. That's what they become. No, I rebuke you, you child of hell. I bind you. And I will get up in your wicked face too. I come with the Torah of Yah in my bosom. I come with the sword and I'm ready for the Mirichaya. I come to fight. I'm a warrior. I fight for a cause greater than I have no cause. I have no power of life and death, but he does. So when you find those chatterers and always talking, you find men that love to talk, but yet there is no power of that word in them. And when you try to show them where they're wrong, then you heaping wood on that fire. Well, brother, I know him. You don't know a damn thing, man. You don't know nothing. A chatterer knows nothing. And that's a fact. They want to present themselves, and what you do, uh, you create vengeance. They begin to get mad at you. They get mad at me. That's all right. I don't have no problem with that. I don't get folks don't like me. I've never been liked too much anyway. My mother would tell me, I hate you. 
That was it, her anger. She didn't know what love was. I don't hold that against that old woman. Don't have no animosity. I would always tell her, I'm glad you, was, you were my mother. I would tell her that. I'm glad I was not born to a rich house. I'm glad you birthed me. Oh, that will break the fountains of her tears. I said, I appreciate you, old woman. I'm not going to fellowship in your folly, but I appreciate you. I'm glad you were my mother. Especially when she would get a little crazy on me. I said, I'm glad you were my mother. Hallelujah. Proceeding here. Don't argue with the chatterer. Don't even, don't even participate in their activities. None whatsoever. Shirak 11.32 It says in Shirak, of a spark, bara, of the kindling of fire, a heap of coal is kindled. Now these are words that I continue to repeat, don't I? There's a reason why. He says, and a sinful man lay wait to shed blood. As you see the fire and the spark of fire that's what a sinful man does, a sinful woman, they wait. And they wait on you to draw you into a delusion of vengefulness and sinfulness and corrupt activity. It says, beware of a scoundrel, for he devised evil. He devised evil. And he, least he give you a lasting blot. A lasting blot. We must be aware of the evil men. Because as Bildad says to Eob, the light of the wicked, a wicked man, the light of the wicked shall be put out. And the spark of his fire shall not shine. No different than what Shirak says in 1133, beware of the scoundrel for he devised evil. That's what a wicked man does. There is a fire that should never be started on the Shabbat. We should never kindle a fire on the Shabbat. Never. You find men, listen. What is a sinful wicked man? I'll answer. I just want you to ponder it. It's the congregation of men and women when they gather whereby Torah is never exude, where there is no delight in Torah. They delight in laughter, folly, sinning, eating, playing. But there is no exaltation of Torah. That's an evil congregation. That's an evil congregation. So if you have one that has the ability to exude and exalt Torah, let him talk. Let her talk. And be quiet. Not a man that is mumbling with jumbled words and words that are not coherent, that are not of any substance. So there are certain congregations and gathering we should not gather in. Shirak warns us. Shirak 16.6. I'm coming to one conclusion here. Don't worry about it. Quote, You know that preacher down there, he starts with fire on the Shabbat. Unquote. I want this message to be entitled, The Fire of the Shabbat. All right, The Fire of the Shabbat. Shirak says in chapter 16, verse 6, he says, in an assembly of wicked sinners shall a fire be kindled. How do you kindle a fire? Ah, that's the most important thing, isn't it? Don't worry. In the assembly of wicked men, men that are Russia, that performs Russia, minds that do not love Torah, I read it another way. In the assembly of wicked sinner women, in the assembly of wicked sinner men, 
Shell on ish, a fire that burns down to the depths of hell. Uh, again, the word kindle is used. It's an ants, bara. I'm a student. I search. I ponder. I lay on my bed at night. And then the scripture may come to mind. My issue, where are you going? I'll be, I'll be back. You just lay down. I know, but just, just give me, give me. And then when I find that scripture, I'm satisfied. Then I can rest. And if I don't find it, I can't go back and rest. Because I know what you're going to need. Look at you. You're going to need more than what you got. It doesn't promote truth. It doesn't promote a damn thing. You're going to need more than what you got. Your love is not worth a damn. You're going to need more than what that you call love. That ain't worth a damn thing. There's an old fellow down here who used to work at the flea market. Not work. He owned some, a building down there. He was crippling. I'll never forget going in there one day. I had put some windows on layaway. When I went back, he was gone. He was dead. I didn't feel bad because... And he says to me one day, he says, preacher, he said, I was so sick, I wanted to just go on. I was just too sick, preacher, man. He said, but there's one thing that I know. He said, people care more about pets, dogs, and cats than they do humans. They don't care about people. He said, in that hospital, they didn't care about. He said, even my desire was to die. He said, I was ready. They care more about dogs and animals. They will embrace a dog. Dog lick them in the mouth. But we do not embrace each other. You kiss a damn dog. You let a damn dog lick you. She don't know how to embrace a true Hebrew. And by the way, he was a Caucasian that said that. He knew he could be honest with me because there were no pretense with me. How much you want for that? I said, look, no, I'm going to buy more than that. You're going to give me a bit. Preach, how much you going to buy? I said, come on down. Give me a deal. Now, you, I tell you what. Tell me the deal you'll get me. Give them trigger for a lot. I said, well, we got to do better than that. I'm going to do more than that. He said, preach, I'll tell you what I got in them. See, that's how men, he will cause men to give unto you. But when you are honest... In the assembly of wicked sinners, they're not just sinners, they're wicked. They have no Torah delight. They defy Torah, they're wicked sinners. He said, Far shall be Mara, shall be kindled. And in a Mara, in a rebellious, a contentious attitude toward Torah and disobedience, uh, he said, Nation's wrath is set on fire. That's what caused. Are we not a Kadosh nation? Are we not that? Yes. See, that's what set the nations on fire. Hallelujah. Our rebellion is and our disobedience unto Torah. We don't give a damn. We don't care. We don't love. We don't know. We're not sensitive to, to Yisraya. That's wrong. Yeah. We should love Yisraya like we love ourselves. Hallelujah. And because you don't give a damn about you, you cannot love me. You can't love nobody. You don't give a damn about you, you can't care for me. You don't correct you and you don't want me to correct you. Well, you sit here, you listen to this. I will correct you, you wicked thing. I don't care who you are. Take your damn few dollars and run. It's not going to stop anything here. Nothing. Nothing is going to stop. Period. And those who said it's going under. And they went under. So when you dwell with wicked sinners, what is the mindset of wicked sinners? Yah's never on their mind. There's no conversation about Torah. It's all about one covetous thing, their own damn wicked greed, their own damn lust, a bunch of folly, a bunch of frivolity. You're among wicked sin for men. Because when you've got men that are that evil and sadistic, they can't even discern time and judgment. They don't even know that death is knocking on the door. You among women like that, especially you elderly women, uh, you're full of laughter. And, and even in the old folks in my days, they say, Gail, if you don't stop that cackling, they didn't even allow us to laugh. You didn't hear the laughter. Talk to me, someone. Uh, they tell you, stop that damn cackling. 
And now everything we do is cackling. Is cackling. They didn't even allow us to cackle. Yet among the people of Yah, you can hear them a block away. Cackling and laughed and folly. So in the midst of folly, as Mark Shimon will call all time, be not given too much foolishness. What die ye before your time? You let someone come into the midst of them and began to admonish Torah. They will get angry at them. But you don't get angry at the one that's wicked sinners. That kindles a fire. Well, how do they kindle a fire? Well, we get to that. Hallelujah. Is there anything that you write substantiate this with? He says in the 23rd chapter in, in verse 16. He tells us in Shurak 23, 16, there are two sorts of men that multiply sin. What is sin? It is a transgression of the Torah, isn't it? So this commandment tells us in Zechah HaShabbat, Yishimah HaChadosh. Remember the Shabbat and keep it. And then of all things, he says, don't even kindle a fire on the Shabbat. Does it say that? In all of your dwelling. Why, why you say that, Yah? Tell me. I mean, come on. You've got to reveal that. You're consuming fire. Your word is like fire. You kindle the fire in your messengers when they stand before the people. Yet you say don't kindle a fire. Quote, with that man down there, you know he kindles a fire on the Shabbat. Unquote. I do kindle a fire though. I'm guilty. I'll show you the fire. Hallelujah. Shirak 23, 16. Two sorts of men multiply sin. And the third kind of man, they incur the wrath of Yah, his Ebra. His anger poured out without any consideration, without any compassion. He says, the nephish, the nephish heated like a burning fire will not be consumed, will not be quenched until it is consumed. Now there's a fire that burns in a man that Yah hates. It should not be conceived. That's why he tells us, I'll read that. Listen to this. He say, a man who commit incest fornication with his near of kin. Is that wicked? See, that's what we're doing. We don't think that's us though. He said, will never cease until the fire burn him up. Your evil, your wickedness will never cease uh, till Yah cause the fire to burn down to the lowest of hell. It will always be kindled by your evil, damnable, sadistic way. That's why we cannot change. That's why we do the same things over and over. Say, I'm sorry, I'm going to do it. You're not going to do one damn thing right. Your righteousness produces the same damn thing because you will not confess your damn wicked ways, man. Uh, come on, that's why you had to bring the offering of the sin offering before, before the, the living. Uh, that they could offer up for your damn sins. Uh, we don't see Yahshua in Yisrael. Yeah. We don't see Yahshua in one another. Why? Because our eyes have been blinded by our own depravity. Hold oh, that. I'll get back. There's a verse I want to read. In Shirak 9.8. It says, One that commit incest with his nearest of kin. That is wicked there. Ah, uh, Yah said, burn him in hell. I'm going to burn him. And we don't think that we commit incest. With that which is kindred to our mind. And the wicked thoughts that constantly dominate us. He says in Shirak 9, 8. He's talking to us men. Hallelujah. You got lust in you and you're burning, you're covetous. He tells us, he says in Shirak 9, 8. He says, turn away your eyes from a shapely woman. Not all women are shapely. Neither are all men shapely. There are women that are shapely. He said, turn, shoot. Turn away your eye and your thoughts away from that. Not just the physical eyes. He's talking about the eye and th turn away your thoughts from that. You saw that woman, all of a sudden you're thinking, man, she is, she's fine, man. You look nice. You can think you're fine all you want to, all right? That's your delusion, okay? But the Torah talks about a shapely woman. And Yah says, when you see that man, turn your head. I'm going to read what's in the book. 
It says, turn away your eyes from a shapely woman and do not look intently at the beauty belonging to another. Don't look at her. That's her beauty. Don't look at her. And they will say the day she's finer than wine. Don't look at her. Wine gets you drunk. Yeah, yeah. Man, she's fine, man. You see the way that girl walks. You're not fine because you think you're fine. Turn away your eyes from a shapely woman. Do not, do not look on her beauty intently. Say, oh, she likes me. You silly boy. She doesn't like you. 22-year-old gal because she looks at me, she likes me. She can do better than me. There are 30-year-old young men that are full of fear and strength. At least they have something compatible. Sure they do. She can do better. She can't do better than me. 35-year-old woman can do better than me. 35-year-old woman can do better than me. I'm an old man getting older. So you turn away your eyes from that. That which has been formed in your mind. It belongs to me. It says, many have been misled by a woman's beauty. And then he says, and the passion by its passion, it is kindled like a fire. When you look at her, you can't get out of your mind at night. You lay on your bed, she's in your mind. And it will never see another day in your life. Fact. So there are women that kindles a fire in a man. The passion. You do not say woman don't look at a shapely man. They say man don't look at a shapely woman. Because that fire it never goes on. That's why all your daughters are just out and keep yourself shapely for your man. and Keep his eyes on you. Don't get mad at me. Keep yourself shapely. That's what you do. Keep yourself pretty. Looking nice. It's more than you having something flop in front of you like that. Keep yourself fine. You all don't have to lock me. Hallelujah. Your daughters are tis how you don't keep yourself looking nice for your man. Yeah. Keep yourself smelling nice for your man. Hallelujah. Oh, everybody get quiet. Hallelujah. Talk about my wife. I talk to you, man. Hallelujah. So you don't look at a shapely woman. Because it comes as a fire. Remember the Shabbat and keep it set apart. And of all things, he tells us not the kennel of fire. What are you leading to, Yah? Well, the prophet, you all, we got to finish this today, all right? Give me a few, a little more time. You all going to rest tomorrow. So, I'm going to preach. We're going to eat. You can sit and chatter for hours, produce nothing. Let's produce something in you, all right? There's a tremendous judgment that's coming upon us. Why? And what is the reason behind that? Well, if I listen to the voice of the prophets of the Novi'im, the Novi, I can understand that. And there is one that said, I got something kindling in me. His name is Yeshaya, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9. This is why judgment is coming upon us. It says in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 18. We're talking about the issue of the fire. Do not kindle a fire on the Shabbat. It says for the wickedness burns as the ush, as the fire. It shall devour the briars and the thorns. And shall kindle in the thickets of the forest. And they shall mount up like the lifting of smoke. Why? Through the wrath of Yah of Hosava is the land darkened, and the people shall be fuel of the fire. No man shall even spare his own brother, but yet your brother loves you, doesn't he? Oh, my son loves you. Your son will not even spare you. And the fire burns because of the wickedness. There's something burning in us, and there's a fire that we kindle. We kindle that fire with an Assault against Yah. We kindle that fire because we hate Yah. We kindle that fire because we hate judgment. There's one fire that Yah says above all fires. Don't kindle on the Shabbat. Do not bara. That's right. Praise Him. 
Do not kindle the fire on the Shabbat. He tells us a fire. He tells us the very resource of that fire. He says, don't kindle it. And there's one that speaks so profoundly and gives us direct insight of that fire. It's in Yaakov, the book of James 3, 5. As I said, don't forget the word Barakendo, the word Ishfaya. Don't forget those words. James 3 and 5. It says, even so the tongue, the lotion is a little member. And it boasts great things. It says, behold, how great a matter of a little fire kindles. Just that tongue. That law shown. Yah says, get that wickedness out of you. Don't kindle that fire on the Shabbat. Your tongue, your law shown speaks to your mind. And because you don't like what the messenger said, you kindle this damned of a fire. And you spread this fire. A little fire kindle. It says, and the tongue is a fire. You wake up on the Shabbat, you kindle the fire with your children, your husband, your wife. You discourage your children. My mother discouraged me. My mother whipped the hell out of me. If there was any hell in me, that drop cord would bring it out. And the Torah commands us not to discourage our children. I remember this man's wife that the daddy was going to whip the hell out of and she deserved it. And he came looking for a beating on his leg. And I never forgot, I said, Brother Lindsay, whip her back. She says, get out of my face. Go home. I don't, don't, don't ask me to save you. Get out of my face. And Brother Lindsay, his eyes were red. You could see, I know what I'm saying because he stood there. He said, I don't care what Riyak says. I wasn't offended. Because his ebra, his off, his anger spoke. And the fire that was in his eyes. I said, little heifer, that's what I said. Get away from me. Go home. Your dad is coming to take care of business. And Brother Lindsay had that stick was about that big. And he was beating himself. And I'm looking at him and he, and it was a steady stroke on his leg. Shuck, shuck. No, I wasn't going to disregard him in front of her. It's a little heifer. Get out of my face. Go home. You deserve everything he's going to get. Get out of my face. Uh, it's amazing how they love me. They didn't care my words would rescue them. I, I, I promise you, I didn't do that. I, I, I didn't do that. Say, little heifer, if you don't get out of my face, get home. Your daddy will be there. And I never forget, I said to him, I said, he said, I don't care what Riyak says. Well, I knew he cared. I said, Brother Lindsay, I said, you know, she can have babies now. She's a woman. She does the same thing your wife does. She has a monthly. She's a, she's a woman now. She can make a baby. She can get married. And his whole countenance changed. I say, what you do, you go home and counsel her as a father. Talk to her. When a young woman gets a certain age, mothers, fathers, you don't put the rod on them. Hell, your daughters can have babies like you. She's a woman. Don't be silly. No, you may not like what I say, but it's still the truth. So it's the words of your counsel. And your counsel is backed up by your actions. When you're a beautiful mother, they will desire those traits. You do things right, they will want that. So hell, you think you're going to do it with a rod? Can I ask you a question? And yet, the rod of Yah, as Azakim reminded us, is meant to correct us. His shavat, his staff, is to draw us in. But you see, put the rod on us, it still doesn't 
make us do right in all of his great love that's why we need counsel constantly that's why that's why we need wise men that in the midst of your great thralls that his facial his countenance will draw you and he will speak the wisdom hell men today are too damn stupid and too childish you get upset that because you know that's you you're stupid and you're childish you don't get upset then that's why you get upset you get on there with that you can talk like that to me it just embolden me and make me strong I don't want to be like that when Evan Hartsfield would say you're a stupid boy I will cry yeah I don't want to be like that that was my deliverance I don't want to be like I don't want to act like I don't want to do like that see I would cry I will receive that these stupid men today don't know how to receive it that's why they'll never grow the tongue is a fire it is, a, it is a world of injustice. It's just my tongue that is a world of evil, isn't it? But your tongue is not a world of injustice, is it? You speak lies against Yisrael. You bring that into the house as a burden on the Shabbat. You kindle that fire on the Shabbat and it stays with you. You let it go down a little bit so because you want to pretend that nobody sees that time. But you kindle that fire on the side. He said, the tongue is a fire. Now, how can that be then? I read us the definitive of what the father Yah is, uh, but yet y'all said the tongue is a fire. The law, the law shown, uh, that thing that, uh, that rules you and governs you. He said, the tongue is a fire, a world of, uh, a world of injustice. Uh, it is an evil. It's a world of such evil pretenses uh, and injustice. Uh, so is the tongue among our member that it defiles the whole body. Could we bring uh, a sin offering on the Shabbat? Uh, we couldn't do that. We cannot bring any burdens uh, into Yah's house on the Shabbat. Uh, and our bodies are defiled. Our minds are defiled. Because of our tongue. Because of that fire. And that's the fire we cannot start. And by the way, I don't start a fire on the Shabbat. How about that? No, the tongue is a world of iniquity. And you don't start lies and accusations and chattering. You need to be quiet on the Shabbat. You sit and testify the tub of Yah and the mercy and the kindness of Yah, his hasit. That's what it's supposed to be. You don't bring the burdens of those outside things uh, into Yah's house and they become a, a fire and you just sit, talk about damn folly and silly talk. It defiles the whole body. And it sets the fire of the course of nature, even the things that are right to do, it causes them to be consumed in your mind. Even you that want to do right, that little tongue causes that to be consumed out of you. And Yah says, it is set on the fire of hell. Yeah. He says that the tongue is the world of evil, injustice, isn't it? So how can we, as a people... The Torah is Yah's truth. His mitzvah is what shapes the Torah, isn't it? Yeah. These commandments uh, are what produce the statutes uh, 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 and the ordinance of Torah, right? Uh, sure they are. So if our tongue is evil or evil, uh, then we know we don't have the Ruach of Yah. How do I know that? Because, turn quickly, Debarim, Deuteronomy 32 verse 4. Deuteronomy 32 verse 4. He says, Yah is the sewer. He is the rock. His work is tomim. His work is perfect. Everything Yah does is perfect. For all, for all, for all, for all. Wasn't that what Moshe was to do for all his ways? To teach the people the way of Yah? For all his ways are uh, judgment. He is an almighty one of truth. Is that Yah? Yes. And without, and without injustice. There's no injustice in him. So if our tongue, if our tongue is a root or it is a wall of injustice, it's because we don't have the Ruach of Yah, isn't that? So if you don't have the Ruach of Yah, you have no light of the Torah of Yah because it is not a spiritual delight to you. So that's why you talk, talk. We think that it's someone else's fault. It's all your fault. Every bit is your fault. There's no injustice in you. You want to blame someone else for being injustice. 
or unjust, doing injustice toward you, don't we? We're so cowardly weak. Well, the brothers don't come talk to me. Shut your damn mouth and talk to Yah. Well, the sisters, oh, oh, nobody loves me. Well, when in the last time you even shown any kind of affection of love, you damn hypocrite? You might as well love me. You might as well. That is so simple, isn't it? The tongue is a world of injustice. And in Yah, there is no injustice. So we know that our tongue has not been shaped by Torah or Loshan. It starts fires. You start that fire, it's going to be set on the fire of hell. You don't bring that into Yah's house. You don't bring that into Yah's house. Hallelujah. Well, what fire started? Well, let me show the fire that he started today on the Shabbat. Can I show us? Quickly to Heliam. Psalms. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So what about stand before us the minister of the truth? It says in Psalms 104, Psalms 104, challenge me please, but don't challenge me with something silly, okay? Psalms 104 and verse 4. David says, Yah makes his melachim, or his melachim, rachim. They are spirits, they are the power of, of his ministering power. He makes them... Uh, and his minister or his shorat, those that carry out the word to, to serve him, uh, he makes them a flaming uh, fire. That's what he makes us. And so today he calls the fire to flame. In order for you to cause the fire to flame, you got to add more wood to it. you got to add more coal to the fire for it to flame. Don't you have to do that? So he has caused his fire to flame today. What is the flame? It is something that needs to be kindled and it grows and it grows. And that's what he makes. He makes his ministers. He calls them to be lahats. He calls them to burn and blaze and to be kindled with the fire of his Torah. He calls them to blaze up. That's yeah. He starts to found the Shabbat. Sure he does. It says in Shirak 48.1, as he speaks to Ephraim, as he gives them revelation of Elijah and Elisha, he says the prophet Elijah, he rose up, Shirak 48.1, he rose up like a fire. And his words, my, 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 as the old Baptist boy would say, my, 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 and his words, the dab and the dabarim of his mouth, it burned like the torch lamp. It burned with the light of the Torah. That's what his words burn like, like a torch lamp. You got to keep refueling the torch for the fire to get high. And so that's what his ministers are like. They burn like a torch lamb. Hallelujah. 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 So that's how they burn. He speaks on to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. He said, I want you to speak. We are a pack of damn hypocrites what we are. We don't judge ourselves. He said, you tell them what I said, Jeremiah 5.14. Therefore, this says, yeah, Jeremiah 5.14. It is all going to be conclusive. It is all going to add up to one thing. We don't start a fire on the Shabbat. You let Yah start the fire. He start the fire that he kindles down in the messengers to burn down to the lowest parts of your hellish ways. To consume your hellish evil ways. Therefore, says Yah, the servant master of hosts, because you speak this word, because you do what I command you, you do it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Shabbat, he said, you do it that way. Yah says, I will make my word, I will make my word in your theft. Where is the tongue? Is it not in the mouth? He said, I will make my word in your mouth. My word in your mouth fire. I'm going to kindle it 
When you feel as though you cannot talk, I'm going to make the kindling of that fire rise up. Uh, he says it's going to be like fire and this people shall be like wood. Uh, so you tell me, Yeremiah just spoke on Monday and he sat down on the Shabbat when he stood up before that, oh hell, uh, that damn wicked congregation. Uh, and when the fire of Yah began to kindle in him, uh, and when that bara, that word began to ignite, uh, he began to kindle the fire and he caused the wickedness of the people uh, he calls it to be burned uh, and to be consumed in them quote you know that preacher down there starts a fire on the Shabbat unquote no yes starts a fire yeah. I don't start a fire yeah. he starts it I'm glad that his word is wise I'm ignorant but his word is wise and because I am ignorant he reveals the simple stuff to me he does. He opened up simple things to me. I'm not looking for something to impress people. Everybody wants to impress someone. I was down there at on yesterday. A young man said, he saw the color greens I had. He said, oh man, that's right. Put you some fat back. I said, oh no, not, not no fat back, homeboy. I said, put your smoked turkey wing in there. He said, I heard that's nice. I said, yeah, get your, get your some cheap turkey necks. See, I didn't try to tell him how to eat, uh, but I wouldn't eat the fat. But he says, uh, you don't eat pork, and I didn't have to go on no dissertation. With him. I said, nah. I said, man, I said, I'll tell you what, you put this from smoked turkey next to that tastes better. He said, you know what, that sounds better. I said, I'll tell you what, next time try it. See, I didn't try to tell him, well, you know the total sir. You don't eat pork. Huh? Nah. I said, man, you put juice. I said, you know they used to be cheap. But now I say, but you go over there and get turkey next cheap, though. See, there are those that will say, well, you're not supposed to eat pork. You don't know what the Torah says. No, I didn't say that to the young man. No. You don't eat fat bag? I said, no, that I don't eat now. I didn't tell him I don't eat shrimp and lobster. I said, no, I don't eat fat bag. I said, you kick them turkey next in there, don't we? You got a battle for that pot then. He created the very comfortable environment. I have no time for no contention with that young man. Look at what Yeremiah says here. Chapter 20. He's speaking to Yah like this. And he's somewhat audacious, but bodaciousness. He says to Yah, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7. You can't understand Torah without the concepts being laid out here a little and there a little. I'm not like a T.D. Jakes, get two or three scriptures uh, and he philosophized them. No, I let the Torah identify and amplify what Yah says. Yes. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 27, he speaks to Yah, he said, oh Yah. He said, you have, but uh, you have deceived me. You think Yah deceived him? No. You heard what the word kata means. He means that you, you make me so simple and so silly. He says, I'm an open man. He said, you have, but uh, you Deceive me. And he said, I was silly. I was simple. I was deceived. Why? He said, because you're stronger than I am, Yah. He's stronger than us. He said, you have prevailed. Even in all that I've tried to kick, you have prevailed. He says, I am in derision every day. He said, everybody mocks me. They, they say, look at that clown. Look at that joker. For since I spoke, I cried out. I cried Hamas, violent and spoil. Why? Because, because the word of Yah was made a hippa, a reproach to me and derision daily. He says, then I said in my own heart, in my mind, I will not even make mention of you. I remember saying to Yah in all my ignorance, I will not preach again. No, you can't do that, boy. He said, I will not even make mention of you. We don't make mention of him daily, do we? He said, I will not even make mention of you, Yah. He said, nor speak any more in your name. But, but, his word was in my heart. We got everything in our heart but his word. We got bull shysting, we got gay loot, we got 
dog dung. We got lies in us. We don't have the word of Yah. We got schisms in us and folly and foolishness. He said, when I said I wasn't going to do that no more, he said, but his word was in me. His word was in my love. Why? Because he hid his word in his heart uh, that he will not sin against Omar. Yeah, that's why we sin. That's why we break the Torah because we don't hide it. It is not of any value. We hide fall in our hearts to draw on that. He said, it was in my heart like a burning fire. Was it burning on the Shabbat? Yeah, he killed that from the Shabbat. It was like a fire. Oh, shut up. In my bones. He said, I was weary with bearing, forbearing, that I could not even stop. He said, I had bared up the strength of this word. He said, I couldn't stop. Although I'm talking to you this way, y'all. You have but thought made me look silly. That's why he could say in the 23rd verse, verse nine, chapter nine, 29. Yeremiah 23, 29. Yah spoke to him. He says, it's not my word like as a fire. Jeremiah 23, 29. It's not the word of Yah like fire. Yeah. So doesn't his fire kindle this wood? Yeah. Yeah. Zakain taught us there are many, in every great house, there are many vessels. Yeah. Vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of wood, vessels of earthen vessels, vessels of honor, vessels of this. Did he not teach us that profoundly with great wisdom? You need to go back and listen to it. Put that message on after this. Hallelujah. He says, it's not my word, Yah says, like a fire, says Yah. And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces, our hearts are rocked. Yes. That's why he needs to give us a bazaar. Not about rubber, a bazaar, a heart of flesh. A heart that is of the kindred spirit. Oh, this my brother, my sister, so I like them better. You damn hypocrite. You can tolerate your sister, you can tolerate your brother, you can tolerate those that are near to him, but you can't tolerate no one that has any kind of social attachment to you, huh? You're a damn hypocrite. That's wrong. That old woman has no one of nearest kin but me. And I will regard her like my Ema, my mother, my friend. And I'm here to protect her too. You understand? I'm here to protect her. Nothing burning her down. Not a damn wicked grand youngers, a damn wicked sons, a, a damn whorish wicked daughter. Not one of them. She has not turned against me for them. She has not spoken to me. But you damn hypocrites will. And I'll rebuke her too. And those that will turn against me for their wicked sons and daughters. She has never. And I watch you all the time that she walks. I see her. Constant prayer keeper, yeah. It's not the $700 a month. That's not a lot of money. Keep her alive. Keep her vibrant. This is the most conversation I had with her all year. Keep her. Keep her healthy. Keep walking, old woman. So she has some weights in her hands. Oh, 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 she's moving. She's not allowed her children, her wicked daughters, daughters that did me wrong. None of them. She has not preferenced them over me. And it's genuine. It's not a falseness. I wish men had her strength. And I protected her too. When she was young, some dogs come in here, I'd kill you, man. Get away from her. That's right. You're going to walk right. She just wanted to have them hold a hand. That's all. Told my Rafi, I just, just somebody hold hands every now and then. Just walk with her. Mm mm. That ain't going to happen in 2013, all right. So you're just going to hold your shoe's hand. Walk with me, ah. oh, walk with me, yes, he will. Walk with me, ah. oh, walk with me, oh, yeah. While I'm on this so tedious, so oh, this journey to the kingdom. I want ya 
Sure, I walk just to hold my hand. Hold our hands, y'all. In a lot of years, old woman, you came as a virile young woman. You've gotten old now. Thank you, my friend. I'm going to close here, a few verses. I'm going to read all of them, whether you want it or not. It says in Echan, Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 13 and verse 14. This is the cry of Yeremiah for the nation, the people of Yah. From above has Yah sent fire into my bones. Do you all hear that? Quote, well, you know that preacher down there kindles a fire on the Shabbat, unquote. Well, my friend, you haven't been here. How do you know that? Yah kindles a mighty fire here. He said he has sent fire from above. Down in my bones. He said, and it had prevailed against them. All my gang says and markers, uh, he said, it is the fire. The fire must be kindled. It must be blaze hot. Uh, and Yah must kindle the fire. Yah has spread a net for my feet. Yah has turned me back. Yah has made me desolate and faint all the day. He says, as he speaks to this people, the yoke of my transgression is bound by his hand. They are wretched. They come upon my neck. He has made my strength to fail. Then he says, Sovereign Yah, he has delivered me into the hand from whom I am not able to rise up. Why did he do that? Because although we bidden should be in captivity, he's going to raise us up. Yes, We're going to make a joyful, glad sound on the Shabbat. His word is always, his always must be like a fire in your bones. We must kindle that fire on the Shabbat. We must cause the word to rise up as old folks are. Just feel warm inside. I just some God in me. I don't know what to say, but I know there's a fire in me. He kindles the fire. Don't kindle the fire of your wickedness. You don't have to kindle it. He kindles the, ish, the fire, the strength. Sure he does. Why? Because in the restoration of all things, he's going to restore his nation, his people. And we're going to flourish in not only a physical, physiological a state, a nation, but we're going to prosper in the state of the mind of Yeshua, Hamashiach. And the prophet Obadiah says here, I love this verse. There are two more verses, three I want to read after this. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 18. He speaks to the nation as a whole, Ephraim and Yehuda. He says in Obadiah 1.18, he said, and the house, be it, right? Does he say the house? Yes. So Yah says, as I began this teaching, that we do not bring a burden in the house of Yah on the Shabbat. The 23rd chapter of Exodus, Shemot says uh, that we should not kindle a fire in the house of our dwellings. Does it not say that? But yet Yah says here in the house again. That's why we cannot dismiss words. You cannot understand Torah unless you draw from all the words or, or all of the superlatives that are associated with that action or activity. You can't read line on line and understand. That's why you need men to teach you. And you write down the scriptures and you go back and you study them. You get a clear understanding. He says, and the bed Yaakov shall be a fire. Is that just on Monday or Tuesday and not on Wednesdays? Every day, isn't it? He said, the house of Yisrael, and the house of Yaakov shall be a fire. And bed Yosef or Ephraim, he says, shall be a flame. And bed Esav shall be kush. It's going to be stubble. And they shall kindle in them. And they're going to destroy the house of Asaph, the house of his brother, and devour them. And there shall not be anyone remains alive in Asaph, for Yah has spoken. He's going to kill all Asaph for the deeds against Yisrael. 
for they saw them in great bondage and they mocked them and they laughed. That's why he says, Yisrael, y'all listen to me. Don't do anything against Esau. This mindset of the world. Esau is more than a nationality of people. It is a mindset. And you find it cross sending every color of people. That's the truth. It is a nation of people, but there's one predominant mindset. There's a defiance of Yah. It is one that sells the rights of Torah to satisfy the proclivity of their wicked ways. Sell out your sure for wicked daddy and mama. I'm not going to stop saying it. He wants us to kindle the fire this Shabbat at the altar. The fire of his truth burning. Sure he does. Melakiah says, Melakiah, Melakiah chapter 1 verse 10. Melakiah. Who is there even among you that will shut my door or the house, my bed for low, for nothing, for naught? Melakiah, Melakiah 1 10. Who among us will shut the house of Yah? Shut the compassion of his truth to flow from us. Who among us? Will you do that? No. For nothing. He says, neither, neither, you do not kindle fire on my altar for nothing. Yah says, I have no pleasure in you. In the old days, the Kiddushim would come around the altar on the Shabbat. Even in their ignorance, they would kindle the fire. The fire of repentance, the fire of, uh, the fire of acknowledging their sins. And they would cry and they would weep. Would they not? Uh, sure they would. So you tell me that to kindle a fire around the altar is for nothing? And the house of Yah is open and there is no fire kindled? I have no pleasure in you, says Yah, of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. That's why our praise offering, our, our, our worship offering is not accepted at his hand. Because we have kindled a fire, but it's not the fire that Yah wants, our wickedness, our sins. He draw the parallel between the natural and the spiritual to show us the culmination of that when we understand the revelation or the truth of Yahshua, Hamashiach. That's what he says. Hallelujah. So if I am a minister of truth, either what Yahu says in Ibrahim, Ibrahim or Hebrews, it is the law or it is the truth. Hebrews 1 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah says, and of the Melachim, of the messengers of heaven, Yah says, who makes his Melachim Rahim or spirits, and his ministers a flame, a flaming, a fire. He makes the ministers of the altar a flaming fire. So in order for the fire to flame, it must be, wood must be added. And when the fire goes down, it must be kindled. When the ashes, you tell me that the Achim, when they come here, the ashes are, and the fire of his Torah, they're like coals with just a little sparkle in that. Ain't much fire to no heat coming out. And all of a sudden you add a little wood and you began to see the raising of the fire on the Shabbat. You began to see the flames of the fire shoot high. He makes his ministers that. And because of Jeremiah, the flame had gone down. But he said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. When Yah began to add that living word, that word to his mind, the fire began, the fire began to be kindled and the fire began to grow and it consumed Yisrael. Yeah. We know Yah's a consumer. If I we speak his truth, it consumes. Above all that, Yisrael, we cannot kindle a fire on the Shabbat. And he has not put any burdens on us. He gives us assurance. I want to close with this last verse here in the book of Revelation. I mean the book of Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me, here it is. There's a verse I want to read quickly. Hallelujah. You might as well love me. Revelation 2.24 Yah says unto Tatira, But to you I say, And to the rest in Tatira, As many 
as have not this Torah, the wisdom, which have not known the depths of Hashatan as they speak, Yahshua says, I will put upon you no other burden. It's not burdensome, the Shabbat. It's not a burden not to kindle the fire on the Shabbat. We should not kindle the fire from this wicked little lotion. We should not kindle that. We should not kindle the fire on the Shabbat. That's why we must constantly examine ourselves, Yisrael. You're busy examining someone else. But you need to examine yourself. As those songs says, you need to sweep around your own front door. Before you try to sweep around anyone's house, you need to get yourself right. You need to judge yourself with the same severity you judge me. I don't care if you judge me. Because judgment makes me right. I want you to judge me. Hallelujah. So if you judge me, I keep my steps tight. I don't go outside the boundaries of Torah to keep my mind right. May the riches of God rest upon you all, you that have joined us. You may not appreciate it, but that's all right. I'm not concerned about your appreciation. May God strengthen you all. Copy this message and give it to others. The fire of Shabbat. Do we start a fire on the Shabbat? Do we kindle one? We ask all of these riches in your Shua's mighty name. And from our hearts we cry. Hallelujah. 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 Yabrak Yisrael.